Good evening, everyone. Would anyone like to do a mic check? Sure, I think that's a great idea. All righty, here we go. Mayor James. Here. Vice Mayor Salvino. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Davis. Here. Commissioner Llewellyn. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Odden. I'm here. City Manager Garcia. I see her. Down here. City Attorney Ansbro. We'll wait. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. All right, it's 5.30. Um, did we make sure Tom was available and his audio was working? City manager, are you there? You ready? Yes, can you can you hear me? Absolutely. Um, okay. I see Eve, I don't see Tom. Mayor, if you, need me to, if you need me what, until Tom gets on, it's fine. Tom will be on any okay. second. Okay, awesome, I think so. We'll start now. Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you all to our City of Dania Beach City Commission virtual workshop um, regarding the Dania Beach Grill presentations. Today is September 21st, 2021. It is 5.30 p.m. Call the roll, please. Mayor James. Here. Vice Mayor Salvino. Here, 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 here. Commissioner Davis. Here. Commissioner Llewellyn. Here. Commissioner Odman. Here. City Manager Garcia. Here. City Attorney Ansbro or Eve. I'm here. Tom is coming <laughs> on soon. You. Okay. Thank you. I want to um, welcome everyone to this workshop. I know that we have um, some attendees in the audience. This is, has been a greatly anticipated uh, venture for the city, and it is a very important decision for each of us. And so thank you all to the presenters and to the public and to the commission for having this workshop and being transparent in this process. And then I'll turn it over to city manager Garcia so we can get started. Yes, uh, good evening, mayor, vice mayor and commissioners. As you said, um, this has been a very much anticipated process. Um, thank you for your support along the way throughout this process. And um, we're here at the, at the culmination of many, many, many months of, of a process that included um, the, the formation of um, the, the group, the committee um, that ranked these firms, that went through all the presentations. I really believe we have three outstanding firms um, that, that are viable firms. Um, <laughs> for the future of our uh, Dania Beach Grill. And I'm extremely excited that you all get to see these presentations as well as all the residents and all the, the stakeholders that are also watching um, online um, to be able to see these fantastic presentations that I anticipate this evening. Awesome. So um, Frank, do we have the first presenter ready? to share their screen, or I'm not sure if we have the presentation or, or if you're gonna share it from your screen. Uh, they're, they're both here, they're both uh, cameras are on and they appear to be ready to go. Um, they should be able to share their screen. Perfect. Okay, awesome. What, what happened? Someone I can share my screen. screen. Okay, you ready? Yep, we're ready to go. All right. You want to introduce yourself to the public and um, then every, and then we'll follow with questions. Perfect. Would you prefer, I have a question, would you prefer for the commission in whatever questions we have to wait until the end of the presentation? Um, yes, that'd be perfect. If we could um, leave the presentation here, I'll go through it and then leave time for questions at the end. 
Okay, awesome. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I'd just like to start with uh, just introducing myself. My name is Deva Cohan. I am the executive director with the Caddy's Restaurant Group. Um, I have my business partner, Sean James, Marcus Winters, and Mark Rowe also available here today to help with any questions. Um, I'd just like to say thank you for your time in reviewing our proposal and evaluating all these three proposals. I feel you have a, a hard job ahead of you picking the right organization to develop these projects and being honest from reviewing them. I don't think there's a wrong selection from these the final three. Uh, each one of us have vast experience in restaurant development, in management, and I believe any of the final three companies would do an amazing job at this construction and the running a new restaurant here. But I'm here today to try and convince you why Caddy's will be perfect for this location. So our Caddy's restaurant group was started over 15 years ago with the intention of bringing hospitality and dining to an entirely new level. We opened our first Caddy's in Treasure Island, taking ownership of Caddy's on the beach and transforming it from a rundown beach bar to a family friendly restaurant. Caddy's Treasure Island is our flagship store. Based on the beach, it was here where we were inspired to grow the Caddy's concept and develop a brand for more people to enjoy. Since the development of the Caddy's brand, we have opened an additional seven Caddy's restaurants. Caddy's is a young, hungry, Irish owned company. Our target is to have 10 Caddy's locations within the next five years. We don't want to overgrow. We want to keep our quality standards and promises to our customers, our community, and our staff. What is the Caddy's concept? Our concept is very simple at Caddy's. A fun, family, memorable waterfront dining experience. You're dining with your toes in the sand. Each one of our locations is a waterfront property. All very similar to Dana Beach Grill location. Our company is very focused on developing waterfront properties almost identical to Dana Beach Grill. Caddy's Treasure Island is a beach property. Caddy's Madeira Beach is a beach property. Caddy's St. Pete Beach is on the water. Caddy's Indian Shores is on the water. Caddy's Gulf Port is directly across from the beach. Caddy's Bradenton is on the water. Caddy's Johns Pass is our re most recent, re recent purchase, and it's on the famous Johns Pass Boardwalk in Madeira. The next few slides have been taken from our company training program that we have all staff partaking in. Our aim would be to have our company training group come to Dana Beach, hire and train local staff in the Caddy's way and to become part of the Caddy's family. If we could find past staff members and managers, we would love the opportunity to rehire as we feel this works best for us. Our mission statement, we're committed to providing visitors with a fun and memorable waterfront dining experience in a lively, laid back scene setting. This sounds like Dana Beach to me. Our personable and professional staff aim to create an experience that develops lifelong customers. We strive to make sure to be the locals favorites and the vacationers destination. Our core values spelling out the word caddies, it's community committed, accepting of all, dedicated to excellence, a destination to remember, yes I can attitude, and service with a smile, even when we have our masks on. Our staff motto spelling out the word swim due to our proximity of the water is service with incredible memories. 
white pick caddies, white shoes caddies. And here's one of my main reasons for why to choose caddies. It's our caddies family. Our aim is not just to provide a job for our staff, but to provide a career for our staff and a great standard of living for them and their families. We want to st our staff to stay long-term, so we provide for them. Our 401k program and health benefits match some of the best in the country. We offer an internal training program for any staff who wish to become future managers. We also offer higher education support to staff members and really push further education with our staff members. We hire local and recruit from within. We will use our local contract contacts through Mark Rowe, one of our business partners who's a resident in the area to help with the hiring process. Just as a current example of our caddies locations, our current general manager at Treasure Island, Rick started as a bar back seven years ago with our company. He's now running our busiest location. Our general manager at Indian Shores, Melissa, has worked at that location since she's been 14 years of age. We supported her through university. She's now a qualified lawyer. Um, we hope she stays with us longer, but at some point we know we will lose her to the law in a good way. Our newest location in Madeira Beach, Thompson is the GM there, started as a barman four years ago with us. At Gulf, Gulf Ports, our GM Tiffany, she was a kitchen manager at another location and she now runs the Gulf Ports store. It is so important to us to keep our staff together. We get to know each other and we get to trust each other. When COVID hit, we didn't know what was going to happen with the company. We didn't know when we'd be able to reopen. Um, I was never so proud of the company I work for. The owners went above and beyond to protect the workforce. A full COVID program was put in place to protect these frontline workers and their families. Our staff were tested every Monday on site. Any positive results or close contact cases, staff were told to remain at home and were paid in full. If they needed a place to stay to protect their families, this was also covered in costs. These owners, they put their staff first and they put profit second. We encourage a healthy lifestyle of caddies. We believe in having a healthy staff. This leads to a better work environment, a better standard of life, and most importantly, better mental health. We organize a staff and family run every month on the beach, free drinks and food afterwards. Locals also welcome. We have a nutrition group visit our stores every quarter with nutrition advice on health and on eating, on healthy eating and living. And then we have the infamous St. Anthony's Triathlon training and participation, which lasts all year round and is probably the biggest talking point of our company. Each restaurant organizes a team, staff and locals welcome to join to train for the St. Anthony's Triathlon, which we are the main sponsor of um, St. Anthony's is one of the, the biggest hospitals in the St. Petersburg area. We have training sessions all year round, real team bonding with all the restaurants. We have a competition at each store for who can get the most teams together and the most donations for the hospital. All costs including entry, uniforms, travel, training is all covered by caddies. Over 200 competitors each year represent caddies at this race. Honestly, the charity is great, the bonding is great, the fitness is great, but the main goal each year is for one of our teams to finally beat the owner's team. It's a three-man team and no one has beat them yet. These are the guys that push us to be the best, and they're the guys at the top of the finish line every year. On a, on a personal note, I finished my first marathon in Clearwater this year which all started with training for a, a three mile run for the St. Anthony's Triathlon. 
here you'll just see some images we have of that day out that we get every year with all the staff. It's uh, it's definitely talked about a lot throughout the company. So bringing caddies to your city will benefit your community and your city as it does everywhere that we have a location. We were asked, do you have experience with restaurant build outs, developments on the beach? We specialize in beachside properties. It's in our name, Caddy's Waterfront Restaurants. It's our concept and it's our brand. We have built on the sand, developed on the sand. Each one of our locations is on the beach or next to the beach. With this, we have gained vast knowledge on what is needed on beachside properties. They need to be managed differently. This is a main reason why we want Dana Beach Grill. It is a perfect fit for who we are. Over two years ago, our business partner and local resident, Mark Rowe, inquired about this location, envisioning a caddies at this spot. We specialize in new builds on the beach, remodels on the beach, managing on the beach, but most important, we specialize in protecting the beach. As you can see from our rest reference list, we work very closely with each city, their commissioners, their mayors. We have gained their respect and the respect of the local community and how to manage our properties and care for the area. We have a saying with our staff, the beach gives you a living, so you need to respect the beach. How do we do that? Staff morning and nightly beach walks, cleaning and protecting the beach. Every Saturday morning, a beach clean. We set this up at all our locations. A walking group sponsored by us between staff and locals, breakfast, t-shirts and everything needed supplied to keep that beach clean. All locations have been fitted with special lighting and glass to protect the sea life. We hired a specialist lighting designer that works with Tanya Long, head of fish and wildlife biologist, for all advice on turtle conservation. We are eco-friendly locations. No glass, limited plastic, no straws, recyclable paper, napkins, all to go containers, multi use trash cans on site for all recyclable needs, event management, beach friendly events only. Grab a bucket campaign. We do this at our locations, it's to keep our beach clean. We leave reusable buckets in areas around our location for people to pick up while walking on the beach and they can fill with trash and return to our location. We find this a great hit with the kids in the area. All sound music is reviewed with locations in, with local environmentalists for suitable timing and decibels to play at. This is why caddies should be picked. Caddies gives back. We care. We aim to do more than bring good times to an area. We strive to make our community a better place for the people who live and visit us. Here's a small sample of sponsorships we are involved with. The St. Baldrick's Foundation to help fight childhood cancer. The Cupid Only Run. The St. Anthony's Triadlam that I just spoke about. We would like to do some similar projects with the Joe DiMaggio's Children Hospital in the area. Main sponsor of the I Care About Me Foundation for underprivileged children. We're the main sponsorship of Finish Line for Scholarships, Education for Children. Main sponsor of the Lucky Duck Race for the Pay Center for Girls. The main sponsor of the King of the Beach and Standing Ovations. The main sponsor of Ronald McDonald House supplying meals to families of sick children. We sponsor Teacher of the Month, Employee of the Month at local hospitals, sports teams in the area, attract events in the area. We are a major sponsor of the Honor Flight Volunteers supporting vets in the area. 
what you see from this is we support local. We want to help the local community where we are based. Some events that caddies bring in. This is what we, this is a selection of events we do at our locations. Movie night at caddies, large screen on the beach at Treasure Island, kid friendly movies, the same in Bradenton. St. Patrick's Day, if you haven't heard from the accent, there's a, the Irish connection. Halfway to St. Patrick's Day was just this weekend, so you've, you've missed out on that one. Watching the heat on the beach with the large screen. Local markets on the beach. We invite local companies to show off their products at our locations. Our pirate invasion, our own Caddy's Gasparilla, our school of music where children bands come and play at our locations. Official parties of the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Tampa Bucks. Hopefully we'll change that to the heat and the dolphins. And free yoga classes on the beach. Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. Hospitality night, trivia night, kids eat free night, dark leaves, live music. The, the list is endless for events that we bring. So moving on to the proposal side of things, the developer and general contractor will be the local based construction firm who will be hired to, as a consultancy basis to help us navigate Dana Beach codes and requirements. We will also be using William Kearns Enterprise. We've worked with uh, Bill on four of our projects with building on the sand and we've worked with him on our other locations for any kind of construction we've done. We have a great relationship with him. Um, they also have the knowledge and experience of working with all FEMA regulations when it comes to construction on the beach. We have always believed in supporting the local based tradespeople and businesses in every city we have establishments in, and we will plan to do the same at this location. Who is the project manager? Our managing partner, Mark Rowe, who is a local resident and business owner of Mickey Burns Irish Pub in downtown Hollywood, will be overseeing the project for Caddy's Restaurant Group, partnering with local construction groups and Bill Cairns Construction. Our conceptual design. This design is from our latest new build restaurant at Madeira Beach. We're very proud to say this was the first restaurant in Madeira City to be situated on the beach. The project took 11 months to complete at a cost of $2.9 million. And that was during COVID we built and we opened the doors in April 2021. Obviously edits to this design will be possible to suit the needs of Diana Beach Project. There's the, the real thing from the conception. And here is the conception of what we would like to put at Dana Beach Grill. We are looking at a cross between our Madeira location on the left, which is a two-story building. It would take full advantage of those beautiful views looking out onto the water. And our Tiki location that we have in Bradenton, which would like to keep with the historic feel of what's already there. I think is a good connection between both locations to really feel the Caddy's brand, which your liveliness, your fun activities, and your Tiki area, and your beautiful dining and views in your restaurant area. This is a current picture of our Bradenton location, our, our Tiki area, sand area, with a restaurant to the right hand side. The current layout we would be looking at on the left, you'd see our two story building, on the right our Tiki bar, We'd also add a, a stage for music. Caddy's is known for having live music on a daily basis. And the views obviously from the, the second story out onto the water, which at Madeira are just uh, undescribable. You have to see them to believe them. And I think we can get that exact same view from this location. What is the proposed lease term? 
The proposed lease term is a 10-year lease, including three five-year options to extend. What is the proposed lease and rent commencement? Once the bid has been accepted, lease agreement can be signed immediately with rents commencement starting from open day of the restaurant, estimating 10 months for construction. What rent or percentage of annual revenue are you proposing to the city? Our estimated sales with a five year plan are from 3 million up to 7 million. The year one sales from a conser conservative standpoint are projected to be approximately 3 million. Sales growth to project to be between 20% and 30% each year as we become established and a well known brand in the area. By year five, sales are projected to be 7 million annually. We have a breakdown from year one to year five. And our proposed rent will be 6% of sales plus CAM charges. How long estimated for permits and when do you anticipate opening the restaurant? Our estimated permits submitted one to two months from the bidding acceptance and our estimated opening time of 10 months for permit approval. This is based on our experience of our new build at Madeira. Um, and this was the same timeline we finished this project in. Our planned decor. Each of our caddies locations include a blue and white wicker chairs, designer tables, purpose-built surfboard dining tables, turquoise boots. We have a large chair outside for advertising purposes unique artwork inside and outside the building painted by local artists to capture the history of the city. Our caddies branded signage, logos and artwork out on the outside of the building all pre-approved by the city. Blue, white, turquoise, yellow driftwood placed throughout the location and a branded location specific retail section. So in this graphic, you'll see a collage of our Caddy's brand. On our left, you can see our retail section where we sell everything from clothing to skateboards to surfboards and paddle boards. On our right hand side, top right, you'll see, you can actually barely see the view from Madeira if you do look up in that top right hand corner looking straight out onto the water. Um, the colors go through the building, the driftwood on the back wall. On the bottom right, you'll see our design for our bars. On the back of that, you can see our caddy surfboard. In the middle picture, you'll see our famous caddy surfboard at Treasure Island, which is at all our locations, the drawings of it. And on the bottom left, you'll see Madeira. And I know that due to the, the graphics on the, on the lettering, which is all to do with the history of Madeira Beach. With our Irish background, one thing we know that is very important is our history. And we're very proud of it, and we know it needs to be protected. At Caddy's Treasure Island, our flagship store, we still have the original tiles at the main bar and pictures of the original beach hut that started our brand. Our artwork outside the building brings in the history of the area added into each letter of Caddy's. A Caddy's Indian Shores, or what it's still known as, is the pub, is over 55 years old and has the longest running business in Indian Shores. We ran a competition for local community to design artwork at this location to capture the history of the original pub. And we also ran a competition on what would they would like to keep from the old building. The original lighthouse won. We did renovations on the original piece and added it to the top of the building, adding lights that had not worked for over 20 years. And these are turtle friendly lights, of course. At Dana Beach, we would run a competition for the local community to design and submit local historical artwork to be added to the decor of the building. We have done this at every Caddy's location. We would commission historical wall or area as part of the new property. We would run a local competition on what features we might be able to bring from the old building, like using, reusing the existing vintage Cuban tiles. 
we would like local artists to partake in this and really bring this all to life. What would be on our menu? So here you can see a sample menu, but we're on the beach. It's gonna be fresh fish. That's the biggest push with us, but we do have a variety in our menu. We do support local. We have Sunday markets for our local businesses. We want to work with the local community when it comes to purchasing products, when it comes from food, alcohol, retail items. We want your business to succeed along with our business. We want to become part of the community and support local. Mark, who has a very successful business in the area, we will use his support network to source local food suppliers, for example, our fresh fish and homemade desserts. We are local, we are Florida based. Here's an example of our kids menu that we have at every store. We have healthy options of fruit, but sometimes kids do like fries, so we leave them on there as well. And we do also pick a night a week where we do a kids eat free to let parents have a night off from cooking and come out and have some dinner with their kids. We like to push this also with a movie night or with a beach, beach cleanup night and get the kids involved. Here's a sample of a picture of some of our, our food items. If any of you are starting to get peckish, I apologize. So why choose caddies? So our brand specializes in beach properties. We care for our staff. We are local and shop local. We protect the beach, the environment and the history of an area. And Caddy's cares. We give back to the community. But if you look at this graphic, most importantly, we are the People's Choice 2021. Number one, best beach bar. Number one, best waterfront bar. And number one, best waterfront restaurant. We want to make being a beach number one. I know you have a long night ahead of you tonight, so I'm going to leave these up here and click through them. And I know they're there for you to look at, but we have our references here and our company structure, a breakdown of our corporate team, and a breakdown of the company that you can all review. But trying to speed up the process, I will move on to any questions that you have for us. Thank you. Um, is there anyone from the commission that has any questions for Caddy? I have a question. I couldn't find out. Can I go ahead? Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Um, for, yeah, go ahead. Was there a raise hand button and I just didn't see it? I don't know. It's always difficult when we're sharing oh. the screen, but go okay. ahead. Sorry. Anyways, <clears throat> um, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, so, is there any live music aspect to uh, to the to the establishment or anything that happens, maybe not on a regular basis, but for events or things like that? Well, with caddies, we do actually live music seven days a week. Um, it's usually solo artists, so Monday to Wednesday, and then we would do live bands from Thursday to Sunday. Uh, and we also have bigger events that we push out once a month. Uh, for example, at Treasure Islands, we have our own, we actually have our own stage and we bring a band out onto the stage and play from there, usually tribute bands that we will bring in for a once a month. Uh, we'd love to have a tiki in our tiki concept on the, on the side area. We would love to have a full-time stage there where we can bring in bands. Okay. So is, is there a permanent stage there or? Yes. Okay. We, in, in, the, in the plans, we'd like to have a, a permanent stage. Okay. All right. Um, and does it, I couldn't tell, I couldn't see where the park was. So does this overtake where the park area is 
um, on the south side? So we filled in with the park. We were hoping to have the use the tiki areas and, and, and come and join that together and use that for our, our tiki bar area. Okay, so the park wouldn't be there anymore. It would be a tiki area? Yes. Okay. All right, I was just making sure I saw that correctly. Thank you. Commissioner Luella. Thank you. Um, Mr. Culhane, uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, a lot of the questions that I did have you answered in that presentation, so thank you for that. Um, I did have one thing, and maybe it's because I'm getting a little older now, but I could not see the menu very well. And um, it was a little tiny, um, so I'm not sure people at home could see it very well either. And I was wondering if you could give me an idea of the price ranges for the items that you're offering, including the drinks. Um, yes, so basically I'm looking at our appetizers right now and they run from $10 up to $13. Uh, that'd be our, our fish bread that we're starting at $10. Um, our chowders is a four, is a $5 chowder of $4.95. Um, our salads range from $7.95 up to $17.95 for the steak salad. Um, our handhelds, which would be our burgers and our sandwiches, are all around the $12 and $13 range. And same with our, our tacos, which would be around the $13 range as well. And our house specialities, which is our fish and chip, is $17. Our tender baskets, $13. And then it goes up to the higher end, like our snapper dinner or our crab, crab cakes, which are $23, $24. So we have a, a vast range of pricing when it comes to food. When it comes to drinks, our beers are from between $4 and we'll go all the way up to $7. We do specials. Um, our daily specials would involve, a, we do a $2 beer always on special and a $4 cocktail. And our specialty drinks, our caddy specialty drinks range from $8 up to $11. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Um, the lighting that this facility typically takes, um, is this turtle friendly? Yes, um, all our lights have to be turtle friendly. And we work with the, um, it actually a specialist comes in to work with this with our lighting and our glass actually, because we've had issues before with reflection on our glass. So it all has to be turtle friendly. Okay, and would you have any type of concessions for like beach chair and um, umbrella rentals there? Um, actually, we, we do free uh, beach chairs and free umbrellas. So we don't actually charge for them. We offer them to the public for free. Okay, that's great. I think you answered the question about the parking. I saw that you said limited plastic. Um, is there a way in our in our quest to try to become more green? Is there a way that you can have a no plastic or styrofoam? We have no styrofoam. Um, the only thing we kind of have right now is our cupware, which we recycle in glass. So we're actually trying to reduce that. And we feel ourselves in 2023 to stop using all plastic. So we have moved to re reusable plastic. Um, at the moment, and we're trying to push that out through all of our locations. So this could be a perfect opportunity to aim to be 100% plastic free at, at Dana Beach. Okay, and the last question I have is regarding parking. What is the capacity of this restaurant so we can know what to anticipate for parking? Our capacity at the Matera location is, I believe, 220. Um, so we've been aiming for on our inside restaurant and outside to be around around that number. Okay, those are all the questions that I have. Um, is there anyone else that has questions? The the menu is very pixelated when you look at them with the attachments that was sent. The only thing that I kind of saw was a fourteen dollar burger, which kind of concerns me because we want something that is. Um, more of a local feel and um, something that isn't too expensive uh, for for a family of three or someone to be able to afford. 
But again, um, and the un only other thing that I saw was that um, when we eliminate the park, if we want this to be a family atmosphere, I don't really see what there would be for our younger kids to be able to do with their families outside of being on the beach. So is there any other thing that you have anticipated to be able to draw in and keep our kids' attention while families may be eating or enjoying their time at Caddy? So with the one of Caddy's locations, we are very kid friendly and family friendly. So our Bradenton location has a big games area, a big uh, an area or kids area for playing. At Treasure Island, we have the same location. We have an actual kids area out front and have staff members during our busy periods who are there to entertain the kids. So we actually have play areas marked out on that on the beach area in both Bradenton and in Treasure Island. Uh, it's definitely something, and with the park location, it's definitely something we would like to work with you guys on and be able to build in areas that will be kid friendly because that's the clientele we are trying to bring to our locations with our, our friendly our kid friendly menu and also on our food items this is our premium menu we can definitely review the pricing on this for the area and we also always do specials we have specials running every day um, our kids menu with everything meal complimentary drink uh, fruit comes to 695 right now um, but they do eat free as well one night a week but pricing and, 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 and making the area more kid-friendly is definitely something we would love to discuss more before finalizing. Okay, thank you. Those are my questions for now. I'll go um, on to City Manager Garcia. Yes, Mayor. I just wanted to clarify on the record um, that the, the south side of the, of the campus there where Tudley Adler Park is, that'll still remain a park and as a matter of fact, remember, we have the $400,000 combined grant with FERDAP and what we're putting in. So we're going to be working to enhance that, that southern piece. It's the northern piece where we have now the, um, the, the, the little, um, little shacks there that we allowed all the bidders to use their imagination to incorporate. But the south side will still remain the park that we're working on and we're going to bring, make it make the park brand new with this grant. Okay, see on the presentation it showed that um they had uh umbrellas to sit under all the way down to the further south southern end. Is that correct, David? Did you all remove the park in the presentation? Uh, that was just more of a, a, a graphic kind of um looking at the, at the I think that was the north side where it was going to. Okay. Oh, could you go back to that on your presentation? Because I just want to be clear of what, what I, I know that I saw. Let me see here. Correct. So when we're looking at it, aren't, are we, okay, so this is the south side over here with the stone walkway or the north side? That should be the, the north side, correct, sir? Yes, this is the, the north side here. Sorry. You're okay, I had it flipped upside down then. Okay, okay. Well, never mind then. Okay. Um, and then we have, uh, oh, I know Commissioner Davis, but we have Deputy City Manager Candido Sosa Cruz. Hi, Mayor. No, I, I was just going to make the same comment that the manager made. When, when this was put out and, and whenever other proposers uh, submitted, it was uh, starting from the current footprint of the Dania Beach Grill and the north side was optional and available if they wanted to do a new construction. What they submitted was the north side, not the south side. The south side uh, was, was made clear that was going to remain a park. And as a matter of fact, we're working on a FERDAP grant to expand the park, make it more enjoyable for everyone. I just wanted to make that point clear as well. Okay, thank you. Thank Commissioner you, Davis? Yes, thank you, Mayor. And thank you, David, for a thorough presentation. You truly answered uh, many of the questions that I had. And I really love your environmentally friendly concepts and uh, focusing on cleaning the beach, uh, which is a passion that I share. Um, I did want to 
clarify that you said you were um, doing almost like a hybrid of the Madeira location and then there was another location that has more of the tiki feel. And I wanted to get a little bit more clarification on your concept as far as are they going to have different atmospheres, different offerings, um, kind of your decision to put the two together and what you envision with that. It's going to be very I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. Okay. Maybe. Is that a yes. Okay. So, very similar to what we have in Bradenton at the moment, is it's just it's a one floor building in Bradenton where we have the restaurant on the left hand side and we have the tiki location on the right hand side. It's the same offerings, it's the same restaurant. The way we describe it as in, in Bradenton is the live music is down at the tiki bar so if you want to have a quite relaxing drink you go to the restaurant area if you want to have a bit more fun down with the kids with music with games it's in the tiki area the combo i i, I pick madeira is because it's a it's a two-story building and i really think at your location what is needed is a two-story building to be able to see over and see those beautiful views that we have in in madeira as well Thank you so much for that clarification. I have uh, just two more quick questions. Um, as you know, we are um, in a new era with this pandemic and the Delta variant. Uh, if you could go over a little bit of your san sanitation procedures and how you plan to uh, keep your area and your restaurant safe for our customers and residents. Well, uh, it's actually something we produced, and I can I can um, get you copies of it as well. We have a 30-page document, first of all, that we have to follow for our, for our, for COVID, and had to do full training with all our staff to get up to standards on this. We've also uh, brought in a company called Cintas to do a clean every three to four days, depending on the location, uh, to uh, disinfect the area. We disinfect all locations. We um, temperature check our staff as they come in into work. They have to sign off on a sheet whether they're feeling well or not or, or feeling any symptoms. Our biggest thing, our biggest issue we had with that at the start was the fear that people would, who need to make an income, would hide that they were feeling unwell. Um, so the owners made a decision to pay staff if they were feeling unwell to stay at home and they would pay them a full their full wage. So it stopped that issue, and we we were actually very lucky in our locations for the lack of spread compared to other restaurants and bars. Um, I'm very proud of what the owners did. Uh, it, it cost. It, I'm very happy to work for this company for the way they stood up. Um, but we put a huge emphasis on COVID. We're again coming from Ireland. We're actually still in lockdown in Ireland. They haven't reopened. Uh, we are getting the news from there. We're trying to be a step ahead of the cleanliness and what's needed. We were so lucky to be open. So we have full mask mandates still with our staff, even though we don't have to in Florida. But it's to protect, we consider them frontliners. They are meeting when everybody, when nobody knew what was happening with COVID, our staff were still on the front line. They were still dealing with it every day, putting their lives at risk and their families because they were going home to their families. So we made sure to protect them as much as we could and did everything we could. Um, but cleanliness is, is second to none in the company with spraying down with disinfectants. We don't temperature check customers anymore. We did at the start, but we do that still with our staff. And we do have a sign-in sheet with all our staff. Uh, we do COVID test every Monday on location, all our staff, and get the results within two days. So it's, again, it's them numbers have gone down from maybe 50 staff out of our 600 at the start to two to three to zero now, which has been excellent. Another thing that I haven't mentioned in the report was something that the owners offered was to anyone that wanted to get um, vaccinated, they would pay for that. They would pay for their time off, pay for their travel. And if they felt un after, unwell afterwards, would pay for, for time off. So we're very pro when it comes to, to moving forward and protecting our staff and protecting the customers. Perfect. And my very last question, I know you said why, you gave us a list of why we should choose caddies. 
what is your number one wow factor for caddies? Uh, it's our staff. I say it every day. They're, our staff are amazing. They're amazing people. I know them all firsthand. Uh, they've been with us a long time. Our management team, our staff, they've gone through a terrible year. They've had one of the toughest years of their lives. We've all had. And the way they've bounced back, what they, I got phone calls every day when we were shut down. What can I do? What can I do to help? We're a family. And these guys will go above and beyond. And to have them as part of my team, you know, it's, I, I'm, I'm the lucky person to be working for Gaddies. Fantastic. Thank you so much. City Manager Garcia. Yes, Mayor. I wanted to put it on the record. I have it here on my notes so you would know for, for Caddies and for the rest of the presentations that all new construction um, on the beach will require the turtle friendly lighting. So it's not optional. Everybody needs to abide by this. So thank you. Okay, thank you. And thank you, David, and your partners for sharing your presentation. I don't see any other questions or hands raised Mayor, from anyone. Yes. Mayor, if, I, if I may, David, I'm, I'm the city attorney. Is uh, it Tom? Yeah, Tom Angelo. Okay. You have, you have dealt with uh, construction on, on the waterfront, obviously, and you proposed 10 months to build, but you have to deal with the coastal construction control line here and get state of Florida permits and engineering. How much time do you anticipate that will take to get ready to begin construction? Because there's a lot of permitting. Uh, the Madeira Beach location, it took, I think it was between four and six months for our permitting. That should be what we're looking for three months. And that was a, a new build at the, at the Madeira Beach location on the beach. Um, we were targeting to have it within two months, but again, farming is out of our control, but we would like to get between four, four and six months. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, if there are no, uh, if there are any other questions, please speak now. And if not, we thank you, David um, and Caddy, for coming to present, and we will move on to our next presentation. So much. LM Restaurants, you are next. Um, are they, are they here, Frank? I'm not sure of the specific name. I see a Sasha, um, we're, um, Marcus we're working Winter. on promoting them to panelists so they'll be able to share their presentation and talk. Okay. Thank you. Hello, good evening. I just wanted to do a quick mic check. Are you guys able to hear us okay? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful, thank you. And then we're gonna do a quick mic check on Joy and Lou. And then um, may we please get the LM presentation unlocked so that they can that one, yes. Wonderful, thank you. That's amazing. And then Joy and Lou, you guys are on mute in your camera is stopped. If you could open that up, please, Charlie. For Joy and Luke. Thank you guys for your patience with us all work through these technical things. No problem. Thank you. Uh, the the um, presenter that says LM presentation, can you give me the presentation right or the ability to share my screen for the PowerPoint? Yes. No. Unmuted. Can you hear us now? Yes, yes. Sorry. we just can't see you. I'm sure you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can hear you all the way from Greece. Huh? Yes. We still can't see you. Whoever is controlling the presentation, um, yeah. that LM, you should have the ability to share. 
Okay. Well, we don't want to share our screen. They need to share their screen. Okay. Got it. At you're sharing your screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lou, your video is still off. If you could open up the video. Okay. Can we turn our video on or is that controlled by Mark? Mark, I'm trying to get it now. Um, start the video down there. There we go. Got it. There we go. Yay. All right. All right. Okay. Well, Good evening. Um, thank you for your patience with us while we kind of coordinated this effort. So thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and City Commissioners, and all the local residents who are tuning in this evening um, to listen to our presentation. We are so incredibly to be uh, here this evening and get an opportunity to share with you kind of our vision for Lucky Fish down at the beach. Um, like to take a moment to do some brief, brief introductions of our team to share with you the breadth of the team that we have um, and the world-class team that I think our family has assembled, assembled together, um, which also includes top chef alum, Katsuji Kanabe as our culinary innovator. So I'm Amber Mashakis. I'm president of LM Restaurants and I represent the second generation of our family customers. And I am um, Joy Mashakis. Um, first off, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak with you all this evening. 43 years ago, uh, my husband Lou and I uh, founded LM Restaurants, um, opening our first little restaurant in 1978 in Deerfield Beach. And together we laid the foundation um, of our family owned company and expanded our footprint in the Southeast across five states. So we believe the longevity and the success of our company is a direct result of the strength of our family values, our strong work ethic, and our commitment to community involvement. These are the values that we've interwoven within, our, uh, with, within the fabric of our company. So along with our talented team, we're delighted to have this opportunity to speak with you about our proposal. And we hope to show you why LM Restaurants is the best choice for the Daniel Beach Redevelopment Project. I am Lou Moshakos. I'm the founder with Joy Moshakos of uh, LM Restaurants. We started again in Deerfield Beach. I was born and raised in a very small farming uh, community in Greece. Everybody know everybody and we never have locks in the front door. Then I moved to Montreal, Canada, 1964. In 1975, we met my lovely wife. 1978, we got married. And of course, we have no kids. We look for a little sunshine after being tired of living in Canada with all the snow we have there. So we moved to Deerfield Beach and we opened our first restaurant and this is where it all began. Thank you for listening. Hello, I'm Gary Sachs. Um, I'm the head of finance and accounting. I've been with the company for three years. I've been in the restaurant business and on the finance side for about 20 years in different brands and roles. Um, my last big stint was with a major chain, CFO. And I'm very excited to be a part of this team and this organization. They're wonderful people. A part of this. Uh, I'm Catherine Goldfaden. I um, lead the marketing and brand team. So um, Lucky Fish brand was part of the fun that I get to do on a daily basis here at um, LM. Um, I've been with the company for 11 years, but before that I was with a marketing firm uh, where LM was our client. So I like to say I've been kind of part of the family for over 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> So um, tonight, I wanted to take an opportunity to highlight what makes us a unique partner. And to be frank, I didn't want to regurgitate the deck that we, we originally submitted in, but really extrapolate the things that make us that unique partner. Um, and so tonight, we're going to talk about the values of what makes us the right partner, 
Um, I'd like to then talk about what the Lucky Fish brand is and then kind of finished up in what does Lucky Fish in Daniel Beach look like and kind of look towards the future and the possibility. So if you turn to page three in your deck or what's up on the screen, the three values that I think are the three attributes of LM restaurants that I, that I believe make us a unique partner um, in this redevelopment is our ability to in and revitalize community or, or an area, our opportunity or our ability to preserve history. Um, and under each one of these buckets, we have examples of how we have lived out these three key attributes, revitalizing the community, preserving history, and remaining local in everything that we do in all the community. But um, as the old saying goes, uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding and uh, a picture speaks a thousand words. So I'd like to take a few minutes and highlight a small video showcasing um, what we've done to live out these deeds in these three It's hard to encapsulate 43 years um, in a three minute video, but um, what we were trying to do is give you a visual example of, um, of what's important to us, to our company and to us as a family. We tried to capture the heart of our community involvement in these three pillars, to revitalize, remain local and to preserve history. And some of the pictures that you saw, going to highlight ones that are near and dear to our heart and, and just tell you a little story, bring it to life for you. Um, the revitalization part, uh, there was a picture there of Taverna Agora. Um, we took an old dilapidated building in the heart of Raleigh and we turned it into a destination restaurant downtown. We brought life back to that part of the neighborhood and it is, um, it's, it's a hot spot right now in downtown Raleigh, but we still preserve the integrity of that building, which was important to us. 
there's it's a historical city and we we needed to keep that alive it was the the old um news and observer building which was the local newspaper and that's all part of the all part of the memories that are connected with that building the um preserving the history um the project that touches my heart the most is the um, the save the pier project um one of my favorite stories was well crystal pier was just one of those old um remaining wooden piers they're they're obsolete they don't build the piers like that anymore and uh, you know the hurricanes and the time and the ocean and the waves it had it had been condemned by the city and it couldn't be used anymore but our guests were full of memories and full of stories and they'd come in and they'd say oh my dad taught me how to fish on the end of this pier or I, I, I met my wife and we had our first kiss under the pier and, or we got married at the end of the pier. You couldn't just let it go. And you walk along that pier and there were signatures and people had carved their names in there and, and the memories of, of the special events that had happened within, within their life. So just demolishing it and removing those memories, we didn't have the heart to do that. But we wanted to bring back the glory of the Crystal Pier back to the community. It was such a huge part of the heart of that community. So what we decided to do is um, there was a picture there where we were signing our names for the last time. What we did is we invited the entire community out to revisit those old memories and sign their name one more time before we demolished the pier. And then once we demolished the pier, we painstakingly took that wood, refurbished it, made the new bar at uh, Crystal Pier, the new seating for Crystal Pier. Hostess we donated station. yeah, the hostess station so that we didn't just destroy and throw away those memories. Those memories are incorporated back into that building, into the new building, that, uh, the, the new pier that we built. And we also gave to the, um, because it's a historical pier, they don't build the wooden piers anymore. The Historical Society, we donated some of the wood to them and they have it on display in their museum. So this is what's important to us. It's, um, it's important to maintain the integrity of those memories and what's important to the community. Um, and that's just a, a perfect example of, of how we feel giving back to the communities where we do business is just as important as you know building the business within that community and then the um the third pillar is remaining local that's again very very local it's it's about yeah yeah it's about what is important to the local community we, we buy local we hire local um, we find out what is the the pulse of the local community and we try to make sure that we always we give back to the community wherever we do business because without that community we're not successful and it's a symbiotic relationship that we have to build within the community and every community has a little bit different focus now our philanthropy is focused mainly on um, children the well-being of children and education. We have done that for over 43 years. Lou and I decided That's when we great. went, yeah, yeah, that uh, 43 years ago when we were going to give back, it was going to be education and well-being of children. So we've um, we we believe that education is important because of it's a long-term investment in the future of our community, the future of our children. And it's the greatest gift. Education is the greatest gift that we can give to children because they will grow up and then learn to give back to their community and the next generation. So you saw in the video there, numerous check presentations. Every single opening that we have ever had, we take the percentage of our, of our profits and um, we donate it back to whatever, you know, we choose a local um, uh, uh, philanthropic focus that, that is, you know, uh, aligns with 
education and children and well-being as well as what the community has a need for so we've um, we, we feel that education is is changing lives it's changing the community for the good um, because teachers make a huge difference so over over the last 20 years we've uh, we funded multiple undergraduate and graduate scholarships at the NC State University level um, and programs for middle schoolers. Uh, it's, it's, it's a hard transition moving up from middle school into high school. So we, every year we, we sponsor uh, scholarships for, for that transition. Um, over the, we've donated over $200,000 to the kids and community, which is uh, a, a local uh, charity from the Carolina Hurricanes hockey team up there do a lot of good within the community. Um, we've donated and supported local chapters of the YMCA, Boys and Girls Clubs, Junior Achievement, another one of the programs is very near and dear to my heart, teaching young, young people how to, things that seem to be a lost art, how to be entrepreneurs, how to balance a checkbook, things that they don't necessarily get in school, but these local chapters teach these children how to do these things. Um, we've sponsored local reading programs, we've sponsored AB honor rolls, um, local sports teams, anything that is to do with healthy living, healthy eating, education of children. That's our focus. So um, we, we look forward to changing the lives and changing the community. Uh, for good, because teachers and teachers impact every part of our lives. Those uh, teaching annual teaching scholarships that we give are probably one of the most um, heartfelt things that we do. We get to go and talk to these teachers who are so excited about going and teaching, and um, they're just so appreciative of the opportunity to further their development so that they can go and. Teach other other people in the community. So mm -hmm. it's been a long-standing tradition in, in our company, in our organization, for over 20 years now, continuing on. So that uh, was a visual representation of how we've lived out these three you know, these three values, three key attributes. I'd like to take a moment to talk about um, our history and how we've become a trusted partner to so many people. Um, we have become, over the 43 years, somebody um, our team members can count on, our vendors can count on, and most importantly, our community can count on. So I'm going to turn it over to Gary for a little bit to talk about um, how we've been able to be a stable partner financially through not only this downturn, but many downturns. Um, so, you know, obviously, 43 years of history shows a lot of stability, but I think it's uh, most highlight things that happened in the past. So, you know, during the pandemic, as everybody knows, but we did and we're able to keep all the stores open and we felt like that was important. Our speakers. Think of the pandemic, we were, you know, we had operating Is it there? A different school, different place. Um, and we did delivery only. To, so, you know, moms and dads would come in to get you know, food for their kid or kids we sent out to their, their house. And then we're lucky with our stores, we had a lot of open air seating. So as we went into month two, three, four of the pandemic, we were able to really provide a lot of outdoor seating with social distancing. If you all remember, it was um, very unknown. So being able to have a lot of outdoor spaces was great for us. Give that opportunity for our guests. And, um, somehow during the pandemic, we showed uh, some boxing and we're open, open uh, Lucky Fish, which we would love to share with you. And uh, we did that, you know, three or four months into the pandemic. We also um, opened or uh, purchased two Georges as a co, which um, is very special to my uh, This is kind of a little slide that we created a long, long time ago, and we've kind of dusted off now and then. It just shows really what we did during the early days of the pandemic. Uh, for us, it really started on March 16th. So our fiscal week started the 19th, but um, this is kind of what our game plan was to get through the pandemic. Um, you know, we were doing delivery only for the first six, eight weeks. 
of the pandemic, cash got pretty tight, but because we were a strong company, we were able to maintain our operations and um, our, staff, our staff. And as we, you know, were able to open up with the restrictions that we all went through, we were able to start repairing our balance sheet and um, strengthening our business. Our game plan really was to weather the storm and really just bat down the hatches and build build a nest egg for uh, whatever thing may uh, occur to us in the future. Obviously, this is now almost 12 months ago at the end of the slide, which you know feels like 15 years ago for all of us. But we we executed this plan and we came out of it in part still going and, and really really. Um, Strong shape. So, next slide. You know, the thing we really did was we acted quickly at the onset of COVID. We made um, good, solid decisions that allowed us to uh, maintain conservative fiscally, keep the stores open, and retain employees. What we what we focused on was how can we keep our key personnel on staff so they have you know a paycheck. But what a very helpful time and of course health and welfare benefits. So we were able to we were able to do that. Um, you know that was very important and that's the that's what we were like we were able to retain many of our our employees, especially management staff at the at the restaurant, which has been very helpful coming out of the the COVID restrictions because we have had level at the restaurant. And, um, you know, we are ready to take on the Ganya Beach project. We have not only the financial capital, we got the human capital to devote to this project and make it everything special that the community could use and enjoy. Quick brief <laughs> rundown of our how we've been financially over the last 15 months. So again, I think what was really important out of that is um, Despite having this downturn, we were able to pivot quickly. Um, we now have this. Well, we had an nest egg. We just, you know, we made a decision to keep this nest egg to keep all the stores open, to keep as many people employed as possible. Um, I can't tell you the stories where guests were coming in, going like, "Oh my goodness, I'm so thankful that you're open. I don't have to cook." Um, you know, cooking sometimes we we forget, or at least in, you know, I forget. You know, we cook a lot in our family. Um, but it's a lost art. And there are many people out there who, you know, live alone, don't know how to, you know, feed, you know, prepare food for themselves. And they were just very grateful that we were open and we were able to provide um, a service to help take care, take care of their needs. Um, now we are ready. Um, we are prepared to take on this project, as Gary said, financially. So the next portion of the uh, presentation is uh, share, sharing with you who Lucky Fish is. Each one of our brands, we've got 29 locations uh, with 13 different brands. And each one of the brands that we have in our portfolio has a unique little personality and persona to it. And uh, we want to take an opportunity to like introduce you to who Lucky Fish is um, because their personalities come out. So you're looking here on screen on the left hand side is Oceanic in Pompano Beach, which opened in August of 2019. And on the right hand side, you can see Lucky Fish, which as Gary shared with you, it opened in July of 2020, right in the midst of the pandemic, right as we were starting to you know, come out of this first. So aerial view here, um, I wanted to just pause one of the things that is unique about this space is that it pays respect to the environment that it is in. You can see it's nestled amongst like lush green areas. Um, it's not obtrusive. It kind of fits in with the natural surrounding elements. And that was important to us um, that it not, you know, feel out of place, but be that space for people. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Kat before I steal. Yep, yeah, while you're starting. That's so, good. Yeah. You, no, you set me up beautifully. So um, Lucky Fish, when we start working on a brand, we start with some basics. We start with some filter words. We start with some personalities. 
if Lucky Fish was a Hollywood movie star, who would Lucky Fish be? Uh, so we started thinking Owen Wilson, right? He's little, he can get dressed up, he can take him someplace nice, or he's happy and laid back in his flip flops and shorts. <laughs> uh, Lucky Fish is really um, where there are no rules, no shirt, no shoes, no problem. Um, sitting seaside, you know, you need to consider yourself the luckiest fish on the beach. Worries blow away with the breeze. I focus on the waves with a cold one in your hand and music in the air. You are never alone at Lucky Fish. Everyone is a friend waiting to be met. The rules are different. No shirt, no shoes, no problem. So let's sit seaside and escape reality for a moment. We really, again, as we opened Lucky Fish in the middle of a pandemic, it was kind of a kismet moment. Um, you know, this was really a, 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 a design um, early in the making, long making, uh, where we wanted something that was completely open air. Um, and then when the pandemic hit, it all fit together. It's um, well designed with our neighbors in mind. Um, we have a menu that is, uh, you know, designed for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, we are open seven days a week. It's a very accessible menu with a wide range of price points. So if you want a $9 burger or you want a, a hot dog, it's an easy way to come in. If you want to come in and have something a little nicer, we've got, you know, tuna, nacho, uh, tuna poke nachos. Um, and our cocktails, uh, you know, we've got batch cocktails, we have frozen cocktails, any tiki drink you need to put yourself in mind or in the, in the beach state of mind. We created Lucky Fish to be an escape. Um, you need to be able to walk off the street, sit at your tiki hut, listen to the waves crash and the, the wind blow through the trees and just have a moment. And it's been more important now these days to find that centering moment in our lives where everything is hectic and crazy and and a little off kilter to take a, a moment to relax and take a deep breath and lucky fish is that place for that to happen um our guest reviews tell us that people come local and visitors alike come because it's affordable because it's accessible because they can't that they're impressed with the value but they also can come in and grab a quick drink or they can grab a quick breakfast to go, or they can come and sit and relax and unwind. They throw open their laptop and get a little work done. That happens, but otherwise they're really unplugging and having that moment with mother nature uh, amongst the trees and in a natural environment. You know, because our uh, menu is a, uh, widely accessible, it offers multiple occasions to visit. We have the dine-in, which the full service will allow you to sit and have a, a service meal with a host and a uh, server. We have a takeaway counter. So if you want to take your food and head out to the beach, you know, you can sit and enjoy that. Or we have a little cafe area uh, near that takeout window. And then we offer delivery and takeout. Because again, when we are a community partner, we need to think about all the ways our community needs to rely on Lucky Fish. Um, because we have a location in Pompano, we are market tested. It is casual dining. Um, we've got indoor outdoor seating, which we are proposing for the Daniel Beach site. Um, everybody, uh, you know, beach goers, your, your college uh, uh, community, um, your visitors alike will find an appeal about Lucky Fish. But most of all, we've got that state of the art entertainment and restaurant facility that really um, enhances our environment that we're already sitting in. And I wanted to show our menu. We, we are, we're tropical. We want bright, fun uh, flavors. We want uh, bright, fun colors. We want a little tongue in cheek. We've got Sammy's, we've got greens. Um, you know, your, your appetizer start off as your lucky eats. Um, and then on the drink side, You've got um, eco-friendly wine service where we offer wine on draft. That cuts down on the use of glass. Um, it preserves the wine for a better pour and we can offer better wines on tap. Um, but we look for ways to be um, eco-friendly or um, thoughtful to our environment. Uh, we, are, we do not offer straws. If you would like to purchase a metal straw, those, that proceed goes to the Oceania Project. 
Uh, so little ways that we can give back um, to Mother uh, Earth, who gives us this beautiful location to um, offer our restaurant. Here's our Tiki Hut. Who doesn't want to sit here at this bar and have a, a cold one? One of the oh, things yes, that was really, I'm sorry to no, please. Um, was, you know, we partnered with the local Excuse me for one minute, if, if you don't mind me interrupt. Um, the audio is, is a little difficult. Um, is If the microphone is in the laptop, can you please place it in the middle so that everyone can be picked up clearly? Thank you very much for letting us know. Is that better? We brought the microphone closer to us. Hold on, we're going to pick up. Thank you for letting us know because I know it's so frustrating when you can't hear it. You want to say something? Okay. Is that better? Keep talking and we'll be able to tell. Okay, that's good. That's a good idea. Um, they they um, work with the local Seminole um, tribe to build a very authentic um, tiki style um, environment or tiki style structure. Um, you'll notice the river rock on the uh, front of the bar, um, continuing that natural element. Um, the live edge bar uh, gives us you know, more of that rustic, uh, but yet we have a nice polished themed uh, look. Our big, wonderful, welcoming front entrance. And now it's, we don't need to talk about Pompano anymore. We need to talk about Danny Beach. So uh, we've been dreaming about lucky fish in Dana Beach for quite some time now. Uh, so this next segment of what we've been into. You're breaking up. Amber, you're you're cutting you're breaking out. Breaking up. Just a little bit better, please. Yeah, let me know. So we've been dreaming about Dana Beach for many months now, and how does lucky fish, you know, fit into the community of Dana Beach? Uh, one of the things that I, I'd like to share from offset that is even though this is our like our proposal of what lucky fish and Daniel beach look like please know that we are flexible we are open to suggestions one of the things that makes us partner is we really, we really want to understand your vision and your goals um, as a community to make sure that you can that out through this project so starting here on, on the screen, you'll see on the left-hand side, our main structure, which will house our kitchen and our restroom. In addition, that will be our open air deck. So as Pat said, one of the key features of Lucky Fish is, you know, guests nowadays are really seeking uh, the ability to, you know, customize their journey. Time is so value, valuable to the guests. And being able to go, okay, I only have time to grab grab a quick bite, and go out to the beach, or I want to go out to the park or the lawn with the kids. Um, and Mayor, I completely relate with you with children. Kat and I are moms of, of, of young children. And so we, we too are always looking for a place like how, how do we incorporate you know children into this? And Lucky Fish and Pompano Beach, um, sometimes my father will call me and say, oh my goodness, I think we're running a preschool here. We've got swings, we have a lawn area where the kids are running around. Um, we have a beach shower station where if the kids go play along the sand, they can come and they can rinse off their feet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's crazy. So they can go run it and, and mom and dad can hang out. So I'm gonna describe the many different ways you can interact as a guest with Lucky Fish and Danny Beach. So you've got the building to the left with the kitchen, and the bathrooms, the open air deck. This is where you can grab your food at the window, which is on like kind of towards the middle where the umbrellas are. And then, you know, sit down on the deck. Or you can come over here to the right hand side where the tiki hut is and have more of that traditional, you know, dining experience. But you've got server, you can 
time, you can be waited on. Um, and it's really up to the guests to decide how they want to so we're going to go into some more um, imagery. Here's an aerial view of what we're proposing. So again, to the left-hand side is our enclosed space. The east is the covered eastern patio. We're getting up. Where guests can have that more um, casual dining experience. On the top part of the page where it says walk-up service seating, that's where there's the grab and go counter where you can go up, order your food, take it away. You take it away and possibly come over here to the right hand side on the lawn. And then in the center, there's the tiki area and then the band stage. One of the things I think one of the commissioners asked is, you know, kind of what is the proposed use of this? In Lucky Fish and Pompano Beach, we built a permanent band. However, one of the things we have discovered is we're so busy that we don't need to necessarily have, have music. And so we've been holding off bringing in live music because it would almost be a deterrent to kind of the environment and the natural vibe that we've created with, with our day-to-day -day music, which already has that island feel. We're gonna do and take a look at a couple more photos or uh, images, images. So here's um, kind of street view looking at the eastern covered deck with the kitchen in the back or back on the left and the TV to the right. Here's going a little bit further north and you're seeing where the band stage is, grass to the right, the tiki kind of prominent in the center, but again, nestled lush amongst the trees, again, being very respectful of our environment. Um, you know, being eco-friendly, eco my mother. I'm a trained biologist, so always looking for ways on how, how can we be better stewards of our environment uh, with, with how we operate our business. So we do have experience with the turtle lighting. One thing that Lou and Joy didn't share when we were talking about the You're breaking up. You're breaking up badly. Sorry. I don't, I don't. I'm sorry, the mic is literally like at my fingertips. Now we can hear you. I'm not moving. <laughs> I, yes, well, we put a, yes, it is the law, it's required, but it's also something that we willingly do and go above and beyond when it comes to preserving the turtles. Pompano Beach is a huge turtle nesting ground Dan, uh, Dania Beach, I understand, is very similar. I personally have gone out. I, I keep track of uh, the nesting. Uh, we make sure that our lights are respectful. They're the proper lights, not just the red lights that some businesses put in, but these are the very expensive turtle lights that are of the, the, the right wavelength so that the turtles do not see them and we do not interfere with their, with their nests and they're nesting at all. And um, as I said, I've personally gone out many times and, and rescued the little turtles that get sidetracked by the, the bright lights of the condominiums and the other businesses along the beach. That will not happen with, with any of our businesses. We are very respectful of, of nature. Um, can you guys hear me now? Lou, what's up? You, you come and you go. I'm not sure yeah, what it I is, can. Amber. I don't know what I don't know what it is. Either. So uh, one of the things I was going to share. So right now we're on the uh, eastern deck looking towards the north where the tiki is. No, you're in the north. You're looking south. That, that's looking that's looking north. Um, but I wanted to take a step back and kind of talk about our experience building on, on the water. Um, with the Crystal Pier renovation, one of the things that you know we didn't really highlight was the fact that we had to look or work very closely with coastal management, FEMA, CAMA, and all the regulations. We not only have the, the oceanic in Wrightsville Beach right on the ocean, but we also have Blue Water Grill right on the intercoastal. And we've um, you know done many renovations where we've had to be participatory with the various agencies 
at getting creative in you know understanding that there there are guidelines and restrictions. Um, you know, we may want to do one thing, but but we have to navigate all those various laws. In addition, we've got um, Pompano uh, B. She's breaking up. And the code. Okay. And the code. We have a new one in our. Well, why, yeah, we don't understand what you're saying, Amber. Well, Lou, then why don't you tell us about our construction project? What? We'll the timeline. The timeline. I want to remind you all, excuse me, I just want to remind you all a little bit of the time check so we'll have enough um, time for um, our commissioners to ask questions and staff to ask adequate questions. Thank right. you. Okay, thank, thank you, Mayor. Well, the timeline will uh, take uh, three months for the design. I confirmed that with the architect. And then depends how long it takes us to go through the city. I will assume probably within 90 days. And construction, I know I can finish from the moment we got the permit to the moment that we got a CO, uh, six months. And uh, then we have uh, a month for, uh, you know, any unforeseen weather and, you know, all that stuff. And uh, 30 days for uh, training. We hire local, we train right in the premises. So we bring in a training team to train everybody in the premises. So in addition to that, I'm hoping now that you guys can hear me, um, our, our partners are, are really important to us. We've partnered with RCC Construction Group. They're a national builder who specializes in restaurant retail. They built some of the large restaurants along La Jolla. They're also the premier contract manufacturer. So you know, they know how to do complex buildings on the water um, and in various municipalities. In addition to that, we like, so they are a local company from South Florida. I forget exactly which city they're based in, but local local South Florida. In addition to that, Juan Linares is our architect who we've been working with now. Breaking up. Juan Tu is local. Sorry, Juan Tu is local to South Florida and very understanding of the unique challenges to construct and design on, on a waterfront project. Is Mark there? Is Mark able to do something about the microphone? Paige is, um, we estimate that the construction budget is gonna cost somewhere between three and a half to five million. But again, that's all based on final approval, you know, final design. These are- to the, to the presenters, please be aware that if there's someone shuffling papers or making ambient noise, I think that's what's causing the choppy audio. So um, just please be mindful of that. Um, so our lease terms, these are the official lease terms that we put in the original uh, packet. So we have a ground lease of 180,000 starting in year one. And one of the things that makes our project unique or you know the proposal unique is that we're presenting that there's gonna be a floor. So no matter what happens with business, um, there, there, there is a floor to the amount that we will pay you are guaranteed $180,000. But then there's a lot of upside. We have a 4% of sales uh, over our natural break point. Uh, and we've got a 25 year term with two 25 year options. And then, of course, But I'd like to take a moment to go to the next slide and really talk about like, what does it mean and what is the potential revenue? So as we talked about, um, there's like a natural floor. And so this is a visual representation of what could be. So on the left hand, break up if you want. So um, on the left hand side, you can see our $180,000 uh, guaranteed minimum rent, which we're calling our floor. And that's if we only do four and a half million. Right now, you know, the potential can go quite high. Lucky Fish and Pompano Beach is, you know, projected to do my nine million this year. And as you can see, you know, that would mean quite a huge increase in potential revenue for Dania Beach. And everything that 
you know, we've been told and what Lou is hearing from um, various business members and realtors in the area, they're expecting Danion Beach to uh, perform quite as strongly as Palm Beach. Lou, would you like to say anything on that? You cover it. We will not, uh, we're projecting to do, we will definitely do 9 million plus, uh, you know, we've got the numbers here to, to date in uh, our projections uh, shows for sure 9 million minimum. Again, our first year before we've added in anything like a band, our, our day parts aren't fully we, we see a lot of room to grow. So lastly, you know, we feel very confident that LM Restaurants is a is a strong partner and that Lucky Fish is going to be a huge success for the big team. We're excited for this opportunity, looking to partner with you, understanding your vision and, and taking next steps. Again, I would envision our next step would be having a work session with you all, understanding what the goals and vision are to make sure that we incorporate this into the design. Thank you for your time, and we welcome it. Thank you. Is there anyone with any questions? I just had a quick question. May I go ahead, Mayor? Yes, go ahead. Thanks. Um, for whoever wants to reply, I. I I know one of the, the things you said that you push is your, your takeout service. So one of the things we're looking for, um, you know, in the city as a whole and for our restaurants that are waterfront is um, decreased um, reliance upon single use plastics. And, you know, with takeout service, people getting a burger or whatever else and taking it out to the beach, the, the worry about um, what, where those materials go, do they end up in the garbage can or do they end up um, sort of flying around the beach? So w what do you what do you use and how do you address that with the restaurant? So that's something that's important to us as well. We don't want trash flying down down the beach. Uh, what we've done is we've implemented recyclables. So kind of like these compostable uh, materials. Some things we do use single use plastic, but we uh, actually, more than single use plastics, we try to choose plastics that, you know, are dishwasher safe or microwavable safe. So hopefully, you know, if we are using plastic, it's an option for people to take it home and re reuse it. And actually my mother's like the worst professor ever. We love those, they're all in the work for PBA free, it'll be reusable, mi microwavable, that's, and uh, compostable. It's very important that it's not ending up in the trash which goes back again to why we have the draft wine system. So all those empty wine bottles don't end up in the trash. Right. Not just do we offer a superior uh, quality wine because of how it's preserved, but it's also a smaller footprint environmentally. And is that something that as a company, um, you all are, are focused on, you know, every, every year, every couple of, uh, you know, 16 months or so, there's there's new movement in that industry. Is that something you're continuing to look at and open to, you know, evolving uh, with the, the restaurant if something comes along that is more um, in line with, with decreasing single-use plastics? A absolutely, Commissioner. Um, you know, we even were using bamboo straws, you know, because, you know, the cardboard product wasn't a great guest experience. And there's a little company who was creating bamboo straw that did much better. You know, it's environmentally friendly and it was a better guest experience. And you're right, things are evolving quite quickly. What we're finding right now is the supply chain is incredibly interrupted. And so we don't have the perfect to-go package, but our goal is to be eco-friendly, environmentally conscious. Um, in one of our other brands, we went and we eliminated over 5 million or four or 5 million pieces. You know those little like ramekin sauces go in? We went to a stainless steel bullet and it is preventing about four to 5 million pieces of plastic from the trash. And that was something we didn't before. Okay, thank you. 
Commissioner Davis. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you for your presentation. I really love that it is uh, family centered, environmentally friendly, and centered on the community and giving back to children. Uh, one of the you answered most of my questions in the presentation, um, but I love that you have room for input from the community and that it's just not a hundred percent you know, completed without input from the community. Uh, our residents are super, super, super invested. They, this is a part of the Dania Beach history. They are very passionate about the Dania Beach Grill and were very specific about how they wanted the feel of Dania Beach Grill to be. Um, and I like that in your previous project, I believe you had with the pier that you were able to preserve some of that. I, I want to know if you've been able to visit Dania Beach, if you've been able to see or what, your, what, what are some ways that you can incorporate and preserve some of the history um, so that we can still feel like we have a piece of the grill with us. Oh, this is how much of a dork I am. I have an entire so like packet of papers here, you know, looking at, you know, what was the sentiment online and what were the stories about the historical grill that you know, maybe I could pull some nuggets out and incorporate. Um, another thing that Kat and I were talking about is getting down there and walking the space, you know, and possibly bringing the architect and somebody from the contractors to go. Okay, what are the little pieces that we can um, recover and put into the design and keep? Um, and and I haven't. I've been down there. I've been around the area. We spent time down there. Lou's probably there, what, every week? A couple times a week? Yep. <laughs> but really having the opportunity to go in and, and be more hands-on with that um, in mind is, is important for us. And, and we, I, we are extremely flexible when we go into a new project. Nothing is carved and stone, as I say. When, you know, we don't have partners, we don't have stockholders, we don't have anybody, it's only the three who uh, makes a decision. So we sit front of you guys and says, okay, this is why we propose. Where you want us to tweak and we're open. When it gets down to tweaking things, I think I'm a master in that after 50 years in the business. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. And I, I do want to let you know that I have visited your uh, restaurant in, in Pompano and I have seen the turtle friendly light. I wish you had a picture of that to show the uh, residents because it is the higher quality. And if you had that kind of to show um, that I think that makes a difference because we are in the middle of turtle nesting season. But I thank you for your presentation. I know there were some audio issues, but uh, overall, I thought it was very thoughtful. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Llewellyn. Hi, thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you all for the presentation. Um, as with the others, uh, I, I think you have answered the majority, of my, the majority of my questions. I just have a couple of very brief ones. Um, well, first of all, I just I want to say that I, I like the idea of the connected buildings um, with the pathway and the covered walkway. I think that's that, that's something that's helpful, especially if it's raining or something, it, it, it people I think would appreciate that. Um, you mentioned, and, and I, we saw that you have a specific area for music and that sort of those sort of events. Um, but you said that you haven't really found the need to hire musicians on a regular basis at your other location because it would take away from the ambiance. Um, I do think, however, especially here in Dania Beach, um, music is going to be necessary. It is a big reason why people would go to the Daney Beach Grill. It is, in some cases, the main reason why people would go to the Daney Beach Grill was because of the local musicians that would play there. Um, so just to keep that in mind, that is something that would need to be done. Um, and I just want to make sure that you're not opposed to bringing in music. It, it's just it hasn't been really needed in your other locations, correct? It not only hasn't been needed, uh, we started with the idea of having music seven days a week. That's why we built the permanent bandstand there and we have wire for it. But when we open in the middle of the pandemic, the last thing you want, large crowds segregated together 
and, and you know, we say, okay, we don't need to put music in. Now that the pandemic is over, no. not totally <laughs> over, but <laughs> we're almost in the end of it. We know what you mean. <laughs> we, we just recently, I think it was about two weeks ago, start thinking and talking for music in. Yes. Another thing we also had, we so crowded, music will keep people there. Our seating capacity was very limited because of the six foot, uh, you know, distancing. And we try to maintain that uh, really very much so. We try to really keep the table far apart. So that's another reason why it stopped us. Thank you. Um, we will have music. Okay. Um, the other thing that, that always concerns me, and I'm, I will be asking everybody, is the, um, the overall prices. I, I did take a look at your menu. You're, I could see it looked like your prices were fairly reasonable. Um, if you could just, for the, the people that may be watching this, kind of give it a, an idea of what your price points are for everything. I mean, as far as what you're charging for food and drinks, and if you have any specials for, for um, people that come in. Mm -hmm. Want to take a look? Thank you. you want me to answer that, or are you answering? So, one of you, but I know we started uh, our burgers are nine dollars, I believe. So, bur burgers are include French fries. Yeah, and that's something that makes us unique is that you know our our we're we're serving composed plates, so you know, I would say that that's that's a trick of the trade that you know often a lot of companies do is. It'll look cheap, but then what you get is is not um, a huge plate. So part of the feedback that we've received and you can read on our reviews is like, wow, you know, value driven. People are really shocked at how affordable it is for being a beef restaurant. And I think that's part of our, our value proposition to our guests is, you know, you're not just getting the burger and then having to the eat fries. You get this beautifully sized burger, a healthy portion of French fries. Um, you don't want to know what the calories uh, so burgers start at nine, they go up to 14, but that's a triple threat. And that's a triple threat. Over in our salads, again, salads start at nine and they go up to a $14 salad that chicken pop, pop salad. Breaking up again. Um, the appetizers range from nine, you know, Lucky Eats, which is kind of our appetizer section range from $9 um, up to like ahi tuna lettuce wraps at 16 and then a trio of chip, chips and dip, um, which is more of that shareable platter, goes up to 17 So that would be, you know, for, for a table. And well, I was going to say, and some of these are proposed items that we are, um, so that, that are part of our Dana Beach proposal. So if there's something on this menu, while we have Lucky Fish Pompano, that doesn't mean that the Lucky Fish Pompano menu has to be exactly in the Dan Beach location. You know, that's where the, you know, as the commissioner group, we can say, what is important? What do you want to see? And those things you know, we can work to incorporate on the menu. Okay. What about drinks? So drinks, uh, you know, beer starts at five fifty and and goes up to eight dollars for a, you know, craft beer or craft beer. A local Florida craft beer. Local Florida craft beer. Uh, wine starts at seven dollars, uh, seven, nine, ten, and then you know our cocktails start at eight as well. Sangria. We have our cocktail. Up to a. Yeah. Up to a, a rum punch, which would be You're breaking up again, Amber. I couldn't hear the rum punch. What was? <laughs> Um, the rum punch is our, our highest uh, item, which is $13.5, but it has. Okay. Do you, and then do you have any specials for locals or for anybody just coming into the restaurant? Lou, what do we have right now at Pompano? We have a happy hour where we have dollar off wells, dollar off um, domestic beer, and dollar off uh, house wine. Um, and that's. Uh, we started our happy hour in the pandemic, uh, and obviously there's going to grow with that as we come out on the other side. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, and I do appreciate the environmentally friendly um, environment. Um, buying your, your own straw or buying your own metal straw when you're there is a good idea. So um, other than that, thank you very much. Thank you. I, I do have a question. Uh, obviously, the, the music is going to be a concern for all of us as you know, the Dainty's Barn Grill was really based off of the, the vibe of the live music and everyone who participated and went and um, patroned this restaurant uh, is an establishment. I, I do want to know uh, on the slant of the walkway, um, is, will that give you a view of the, the ocean? Well, it will, be, it will be raised. It will be raised, so you will definitely, every seat will have view on of the ocean, except the uh, tiki bars that the, the tiki hut that they're down at the ground. Uh, on the grass. The on the grass. Around. How high will it be raised? Because it will have to go over our overpasses and our dunes. Seven or eight feet. We have to because of uh, requirements. We cannot build anything now unless you are up to, I believe, 17 feet, uh, you know, Above sea level, yeah. Florida state law from the health department is that a kitchen must be 17 feet above sea level. Um, and, and commissioner, you have or uh, mayor, you have a really valid point. We want to make sure that the guests who are sitting on those patios have a beautiful view of, of the beach. Um, so we would be, you know, working to design the wherever the floor needs to be in order to achieve those views. That that's critical. I believe seven or eight feet right now, the way it is designed and every seat will have ocean view. Okay, thank you. And, and also to address your concern about music. Again, uh, we are not opposed to music. It, and, you know, look to bring in local uh, artists. It's always fun to you know, showcase local artists and bring the community together. Um, again, we wanna do it in, you know, but even when we don't have the live music, we ha we we invest a lot into the sound system and the, the music because that music creates that vibe, that island feel. You just want to feel like you're you're away on some island vacation, and and we we work uh, with uh, partners who are experts in the audio to make sure you've got the right beats per minute, the right. Um, the right style of music, depending on the day parts. So music is very, very- It's critical. Good. There is three things that creates atmosphere. Music, li uh, lights, and people. The energy Every alcohol. time I go <laughs> into, to, to a restaurant, that's all I always say, hey, come on. What is your music? What is your music? Create that Okay, thank you. And I know that you are um, doing your best to stay as green as possible, but do you think that you could commit? Do you think you could commit to doing no styrofoam and no plastic? Absolutely not a problem to commit to doing no styrofoam. Um, as far as no plastic, that will take a little bit more work. Uh, we, because one of the, the challenges, because we do have children and people coming in off the beach in their bare feet, We've gone with no glass and also our plates are made out of melamine. So, you know, safety first is important for our family. So right now we have plastic that we, we serve our drinks in with safety in mind, but looking towards how can we use, uh, you know, reuse, multi-use plastic, absolutely. Well, we can go to melamine if possible. Yeah. The melamine for our family, we chose against it because it, um, it doesn't necessarily, with the drink where it doesn't always hold up, it doesn't give as good of a, a guest experience. Okay, well, that's all the questions I have. I don't know if, if staff has any questions. And if not, we'll go right on to PDKN. I do see a Jason. Oh, well, he's an attendee. So we're just dealing right now with staff um, and the presenters. Mayor, I wanted to ask a real quick question. I just wanted to double check the time of construction once you received um, all, all the permits. So while once all the permits are in place to move forward, how long would the construction uh, take place? 
six months and I'm, I, I we're willing to commit paying rent after six months. That's how sure I am. Okay. Six months plus one month uh, for uh, training. Okay, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. On, on, on the sheet, Ms. Garcia, you'll notice that we have a seven month timeline. So that's where my father and I have a little bit. So we have six months of construction and you know, I recommended that we build into the timeline an extra four weeks for you know permitting and any slack in our schedule should you know we have some weather delays. But as Rick said, you know, we could we could commit to an estimated timeline on on But right. that's the reason why there's a discussion. You commit to that timeline. If not, there's there's going to be uh, uh, revenue coming to the city, correct? Right. Ask okay. exactly. I, can, I can commit to six months, yes. Okay, thank you so plus, much. Thank uh, you. Plus the month for uh, you know uh training okay thank you okay um i can't see what jason crush has said uh in the chat pdkn excuse me hi can you hear me this is jason crush i represent pdkn and i have the team here with me oh okay sorry, sorry let, let, let us finish really fast with patty Okay, if there is no other questions, this we'll move on to PDK and thank you so much. Are you ready for us? Yes. Oh, thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. My name is Jason Crush with Crush Law. My wife and I um, own and operate a local land use and development firm. And we've represented PDKN for decades, it seems. Um, we work with them on all of their restaurants. <laughs> and I'd like to run around and introduce our team to you, um, our local team. We have Kimbo Camper, Hello. Um, who is a Broad County resident. We have um, Barney Lombardi, who is with LM Development, not LM Restaurants. He is our design build contractor, who's a Broad County restaurant re resident. We have uh, Jamie Chris who is also with LM Development as a Broward County restaurant resident. And actually, Barney and uh, Jamie have spent countless hours at the Dana, Dana Beach Grill over the years and are ready for it to come back. Um, we've got PJ Cavanaugh here with us, who is one of the partners in PDKN. He splits his time between here and Broward County. And, and we have Ricky Robinson, who is the PDKN marketing director. Um, with that, um, we'd like to, you want to share the screen, Kim, and give an sure. intro? Sure. If I go ahead and share my screen with our presentation, and Kim's going to give a little intro, and then we're going to walk through our presentation. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Mayor for having us, uh, <clears throat> or having us uh, submit our bid, uh, and the rest of the commissioners are hearing this. Anybody that's listening to this, uh, this meeting, I want to thank them for uh, joining in and, and, and their interest in us. Let me introduce to what PDKN and who we are. Uh, PDN is, PDKN group is our, our group that uh, began building restaurants. Uh, we're about 15 years in now to building restaurants. We've got seven restaurants, um, all in South Florida, one on the West Coast. Um, uh, the members of PDKN are BJ Cavanaugh, who's here with us, he's a national restaurant tour, has restaurants up in Long Island in the, in the New York area. He's a, an investor in different, uh, different um, different investments, different businesses that he's also involved in, along with Damon DeSantis, who's also a national restaurateur, uh, an investor also. And it kind of plays into what I'll add to that a little bit. Myself, uh, Kim Bocamp, I, be, uh, I uh, was drafted by the Miami Dolphins in 1976. Uh, I've been in South Florida since 1976, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to hopefully uh, establishing a business in Dania Beach because Dania has been one of my favorite locations since I've been down here. Also our fourth partner is Noel Cullen. He's a world-class restaurant operator. He's our, op he's our operating manager, uh, operating partner, managing partner uh, of our operation. Um, he grew up in the Smith and Walensky chain, high-end restaurant, high volume. And so he brings that to the table. But in a, as a group, uh, we're, we're, we're self-funded. Um, there's only four of us. We make decisions, we can move quickly, we can change quickly, we can adapt to things because it's just the four of us uh, making the decisions for what we do. Um, whether it's building, whether it's changing things in our restaurant, uh, we, we typically go over our menus and change them every eight months, try to keep it fresh and, and do all those types of things. Um, but we'll get into all that stuff later on. 
uh, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward and, and I'm, I'm excited about uh, presenting this to you guys. Uh, Dania Beach, uh, when I first came down here in 1976, the first, uh, first thing I did was get on a boat with a friend of mine on the New River, took the Dania Cutoff Canal, and ended up in Rum Runners, which became one of the favorite stops for us along the way down there. But I've also enjoyed uh, uh, Dania Highlight, um, Martha's, uh, when it was there, Grandpa's Bakery, those guys, a lot of places. You know, I've been around Dania Beach. At, uh, that I, so it, it's getting me excited to be part of that community also. And, and speaking of community with us, I think since we opened up our restaurants, and you can see uh, the number of restaurants there and, and the different locations, our Fort Lauderdale restaurant uh, right in Oakland Park and, uh, and, uh, and the Intercoastal has, what, 380 feet of dock space yeah. uh, outside. Uh, upstairs in Miramar, you see on the right-hand side, similar building to the one in Fort Lauderdale. It's on the, uh, a large lake in Miramar. Uh, the one just below in the Miramar location is our location in Naples, Florida. We've been there. That was our second location that we opened. Uh, our first location is location in Plantation, which when we opened, uh, I, I live about a mile from there, and DJ lived about a half mile from there. and uh, So we opened that location in Plantation. That became all the rest of them. We have about the balcony location, which is on Las Olas. Uh, it's more of a pub upstairs. It's a bit of a, a younger person's club, uh, uh, the, the hidden garden upstairs. Then we have the balcony that overlooks Las Olas Boulevard. And then we have Bose Beach, uh, one of our newest locations that we opened up uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, two years ago on the beach. And so we've got experience being on, on the beach. And I know we've talked with uh, all the other people. And by the way, the other presentations that uh, that were submitted were certainly very, very exceptional. Uh, we're just trying to keep up with them. But so we do have experience on the beach. And I know there was a lot of talk about turtles and lighting. And so we've had two years of experience on the beach with turtle lighting. We've had no issues with the city, no issues with the county. And, and so we feel like we're, uh, we, we understand that and we know what to do there. You also talk about community. Community is important to us in, in a, long, a lot of ways. I think one thing that uh, my partners have allowed me to do is to carry over some of the things that are important to me in a charitable fashion and incorporate them in uh, our PDKN restaurants. Um, I've been involved with um, American Cancer Society, SOS Children's Village, uh, Jack and Jill's House, uh, Home Honor Flight, uh, a number of different things. And within our restaurants, you can see uh, we have a golf, we've been running a golf tournament for 15 years and we contribute money to, to local charities uh, around town. Um, we do during, uh, uh, during Memorial Day, we, we do a, a whole, a lot of events for our, our veterans, bring them into our restaurants. Uh, uh, we do, um, for Labor Day, we do um, uh, events for um, uh, first responders, all the different people that come in. And, and the one thing that we do, we try to do with our restaurants is we give for our, for our military, for our first responders, we try to give them a 20% dif discount when, when they show us their credentials and uh, so they have a place where they can go and they know they're welcome and they know they're going to get a nice product. So uh, for me, being involved in this restaurant is, is, has been as much about being in the restaurant business, but it's also been as much about me being able to continue outreach to the community and, and do different things, whether it's in Fort Lauderdale, whether it's in Plantation, wherever, any of our restaurants that we've done stuff over in Naples. So we feel like we've contributed to the community everywhere we've been. And I think the other thing that we, that, that, that we try to do is I think every restaurant we've been in, we try to be, we try to be good neighbors to the people that are around us. Uh, our Fort Lauderdale restaurant where we've got uh, condos all around us, uh, before we put the, uh, a shovel in the ground, we sat down with everybody that, uh, that wanted to come out and talk about what we were doing with our building, how it was going to affect their condominium or what, there was, what, their, what that situation was going to be and resolve it. We made some changes. We moved, we, moved, we moved the place that we, we have, our, uh, have our garbage and deliveries at so that it didn't affect one of the condos on our side. And, and we'll do the same thing with, with this beach, although with this project, you don't have that, that, that congestion of the condos and stuff. But still, we want to get to know our neighbors and make sure that we're good neighbors within our, the business community as well as the community uh, at, at large. So um, uh, that's a little bit about who we are, a little bit about what we're committed to. Um, and so I'll turn it over to, uh, turn it over and, uh, and, and continue with the rest of it here. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate it. Um, and as, as Kim told you, we, we do, uh, we know we submitted the, the 
ROI, and we went through the selection committee, and I know all the commissioners have probably reviewed the top three. Um, we wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to the team um, and to walk you through our vision and how we came about the proposal that we submitted. And our experience is it's been multiple new construction buildings, and PDKN is a, a large restaurant specialist um, because we feel that you need um, a large seat count to generate the revenues that are desired and to be able to service individuals that come to specific locations like um, Oakland Park and the Intercoastal, like the beach and Bose Beach. And to, just to give you a background of our renovation experiences, the two recent that we've done in the past few years is the balcony on Las Olas, which is 1309 East Las Olas. It was previously um, a nail and foot spa and it was in Tiffany's formal wear. It was a retail space that we took over and, and um, Barney Lombardi and his team renovated it and turned it into what is now today the balconies and Bo's pub. Um, we think that the level of detail, the fit and finish, um, if you've ever been there, it's, a, it's a really a world-class destination on Las Olas. Um, we really went the extra mile. The, the bar in the middle that you see there is actually an inside outside bar because the roof above it is a louvered structure that when it rains can be closed and when it's nice and blue sky and sunny can be open. It gives you that inside outside feel. So really um, spent a lot of money um, and developed a first class product relative directly to and obviously um, very well enjoyed by the Fort Lauderdale citizenry and probably folks from Dania Beach as well. Um, Something directly related to the Dania Beach Grill um, proposal is we several years ago, the city of Fort Lauderdale that used to owns the property where the Oasis Cafe at 600 Seabreeze, you're probably all familiar with it. It's like almost the very south point of the island that splits A1A into Seabreeze. Um, they put an RFP out and we responded to that amongst six or seven other respondents. We were awarded the RFP with conceptual plans and then worked with the city and worked with the community and worked with the condos next door to develop a plan to redevelop that site into a beachfront bar. It did not have the same historical um, bent to it that Dania Beach has because we do with our Dania Beach proposal want to preserve some of that history of the Dania Beach Grill. But you can see this was when the property was transferred to our possession. It was somewhat um, under uncared for, I guess is the kindest word to use. Um, it needed a lot of work and really what it needed was a complete and total renovation and reconstruction, at which we did. And with that, we dealt specifically with the CCCL, with FEMA, with where the kitchen had to be located, what the elevations had to be. Um, and it, you can see the site is very similar in a construction um, realm at, to the, the Dania Beach site because it's in, it's in between roads. So you're not on the sand and you have limited space on site to stage for your construction. But we just went through that and we think that, and I've got a short little video here. I think we came up with a product that is enjoyed by all. You're also gonna get the, the get your appetite up a little because we've got some food in this video. Um, and we do have, it's a beach fair and, and we've got the, a brick oven pizza there and similar type food product that would be offered at the thing. But, and if you've ever been to it, it is a beach restaurant. Now, unlike the Dania Beach um, grill proposal, it is all outside. Um, we do have louver group is roofs and fans and, and weather screening and such. In our proposal for the Dania Beach grill, we do have air conditioned inside dining space and outside dining space that is covered. And we'll walk through that in just a moment. So how did we come about with the PDKM proposal? We just wanted to share with you our process for coming up with a new proposal. We heard the community input, we looked at the ROI requirements and we boiled it down to what we thought that generally, um, uh, of course, everything is open to negotiation and further discussion with the community and the commission. But what we found was that you all wanted us to revive, renovate and restore or possibly further expand tiki, casual, indoor, outdoor spaces and so forth. We wanted to ensure that the design and decor was in harmony with the beach, with the marina, and with the pier recreational uses. Provide food and beverage offerings for beachgoers, marina, pier recreational uses, students in the area, because we've got FAU right there, 
and to provide affordable menu choices. And, and we think that we've come together with that. How we came together, we all know the site. Um, we specifically looked at the bounds that were requested in the RLI, the Southern property line, and then if we wanted to, we could propose um, further expansion in the Northern portion of the island, of the, the area. So what was critical to the team, um, to the guys here was, uh, and ladies, was the look and feel. Because uh, we have a history with the Dania Beach Grill, we've all lived here for decades and decades, and we've all spent more time than we probably should have there. Um, we wanted to look and feel, we wanted it to feel like when we're done with construction, someone goes there and thinks that it's been there for 10 years, that it is the Dania Beach Grill, it's just been cleaned up and maybe expanded to a little bit larger size. Um, we wanted to preserve that and enhance that character. We wanted the indoor and outdoor dining. We want to be able to serve the community as well as visitors to Dania Beach because bringing in visitors is important. It brings in dollars, it brings in revenue, and it brings in new people to Dania Beach. Giving a nod to the history, which we'll go through in a minute, and I'll show you what we propose to do and what we've done in other locations. Flexibility in all weather conditions and uh, meeting the specifications of the ROI, which, which we tried to operate within that those specific specifications as to what was specifically requested. So what do we do? We analyze the site parameters and, and to the city attorney's point, CCCL is a critical and important point. Um, it will dictate on any of these proposals, the finished floor height for the kitchen. Um, it is not 10 feet, it's 17 and a half feet. And we'll walk through that and I'll show you some views and I'll show you how that comes about. We have to meet FEMA standards. We have to meet Dania Beach's code. Um, we're very familiar with that. That's where my wife and I come in as land use specialists. That's what we do on a daily basis. Um, Barney Lombardi, who constructed the Bose Beach House in Fort Lauderdale, went through the CCCL process. Um, there are certain things that can be done with the assistance of the city that make it easier for us. And we've been through that recently and it sometimes can be a daunting process. Um, so, so what do we do? We developed a program with a mix of indoor and outdoor seating. Um, we designed a project that revitalizes the existing use. And we also left in flexibility because what we heard was give us a concept, give us a proposal of what you want to do. But we all, and we went a little further than just a, a concept and some pretty drawings. We actually designed a building, Barney did, he's a designer and a, and a contractor, designed a building that can be built. But we built in flexibility and we can always make modifications to that because we know that working with any government entity and the public, once we, if we were awarded this, because we think we're the best applicant, we would have workshops and, and discussions with the commission and the public as to what tweaks and things we, they would like to see. That always happens. So what do we do? We started with the site plan. We know we have the existing park to the south, and then we laid out on the site how we thought it would work. We zoomed in, we went to a floor plan that would actually work in here, and I don't know if you can see it in the upper right hand corner because at least on mine, I have the bar of all the pictures, but we do have an up, uh, the upper level has 82 inside air conditioned seats, as well as 21 outside seats on a balcony, which you'll be able to see when we go into the renderings, as well as we have table seating under the tiki. And the upper right hand corner or possibly lower right hand corner of the tiki area is where we'll set up a stage for local musicians because as we know, the Dania Beach Grill is famous for that and we all enjoy it. Um, so then we said, what's it gonna look like from the beach? Um, this was our initial rendering before we started looking into the construction costs and no, under realizing that CCCL and FEMA was gonna come into play, but this gives you an idea of what does it look like from the beach or from the sidewalks. And we wanted to have that feel and actually the blue building on the left is the exact footprint of the existing Dania Beach Grill. It is elevated and a floor is added to it. We tried to go with the same design. The first level where you see right under the sign, that's the entrance level, a nostalgia room that, that has history, um, photos from the Historic Preservation Society from Dania Beach residents, giving a history of the grill and of Dania Beach as you know, Florida's first city. Um, the second level is the air conditioned space. And to the left, you can see there's an elevated deck up there back down to the kind of secondly, we have grade seating as well, um, so that you could sit on the sidewalk if you needed to. Under the tiki is a very large outside um, 
dining space. What we feel like this looks like, and what I was saying before, we want it to feel like this is not a new modern proposal. This is a look and feel that is a character of Dania Beach. And we feel that with the pulling in the tiki roofs, pulling in the wood accents and the color palettes and, and the standing seam steel roof, that we pulled in this feeling that this could have been something that has been here for years, not a new construction or a new restaurant that just came out. Um, so we hope that you agree with that. And um, as I said, we're open to all kinds of flexibility and, and discussions. That being said, we did propose additional uses. We left a space to the north. Um, right now, the, the little eyes, the green eyes are just um, kind of placeholders. They're little putt-putt courses and cornhole and benches. But we wanted to leave that as an activatable space that we could, for children and families to do things, whatever is interesting or fun at the time, something that could be activatable and flexible as the years go by. This We're hoping this is here for 50, 60, 70 years. So obviously uses in that area may change over the years. Something that was very important to us too was because we heard that, you know, we know you have a park to the south and we did just have discussions with the selection committee when we were presenting to them was that um, by elevating this, not only meeting CCCL and FEMA regulations, but we were allowed to create a 6,000 square foot space that is underneath the entire um, proposal, the Tiki area and the blue building to the left. And we proposed to the selection committee that we would be amenable to providing some storage space that faces the south of the park for maintenance equipment, play equipment, things like that, that Dania Beach may need for the park so that they wouldn't have to store those things off site. It would actually interact directly with the park. And some questions were asked as to, could we provide um, takeout window at grade so that people could walk up, get a takeout and walk back to the beach. And that's what all of this space down here is for, is that we can program this space for different uses for, and we can put retail at grade. We just can't put restaurant, you know, kitchens at grade under the CCCL requirements. So this space is, a, it's a very large space that we're open to comment and suggestion and question and workshopping what could be done with that space to create a more a usable space there. Now, I did wanna, we talked about heights. So if you were standing at 10 feet in AVD, which is, no one can build at 10 feet because of the, the FEMA and CCCL requirements. This is the view when we took a, Barney took a lift and we went out and took video because we wanted to see what views would look like. You, can, you can't really see over the park. You know, you can see that that's the old spot. Now, where our first level of seating is, is at 17 and a half feet as required by code. And you would be standing, that shot would be taken right about from our entrance and from the Tiki level. And what you would see, and we think is even a more fantastic view, because you can get a view of the beach and start to see over the dune and have that feel that you are, if not on the sand, pretty, pretty close to the sand. Now, even more um, spectacular, we think, is our air conditioned and balcony area on the upper level which is at 28 and a half feet. You'll see the balcony to the left and then the air conditioned space above. I think this view is to, would be a fantastic view for any restaurant. I mean, now you really get a view of the pier, you get the sand coming in, you can see the dune in full. The Southern view is fantastic. So all of these things went into our design proposal. We wanted to design something that had everything in it that we could possibly have um, to create um, a real first-class presentation for you all. I talked earlier about the history. We do have an area, about a 250 square foot area in our main entrance that is, we're calling a nostalgia room. And what we did in the Bowes Beach um, in Fort Lauderdale is, you know, we lined the stairwells with old historic photos of Fort Lauderdale Beach and different areas in Fort Lauderdale. What we want to do in Dania Beach Grill is have a room with an interactive setup, probably a, a LCD screen with slides, have historic printed photos and things like that so that people, we can pay homage to the Dania Beach Grill and to Dania Beach. Um, as far as the proposed lease terms, they're in your proposal. Um, we guarantee um, $200,000 per year, no matter what income we make. Um, after 
um, you know, with a 3% increase every year, um, after the 15 years, we propose a 7% of sales or the escalated 200, whichever is greater. And we believe that this is really is a guaranteed income to the city and that our restaurant, we have 450 seats roughly is what we're proposing, which is probably about double the size of some, maybe some other proposals. And we know that that's what it takes because that's our experience, large restaurant. We know what it takes. Even if we're half full, we have 250 patrons or in our restaurant that are generating funds. Our Bo's Beach House restaurant has 450 seats now. It's packed every single, single weekend. So we can make predictions on what our income is going to be. And if you have follow-up questions on that, I'll let PJ answer those at the end, but we're just here at the end. I don't wanna take too much of your time. But as far as construction goes now, we all know that construction prices are in flux, but since we did just complete the, the beach project a year and a half ago, we did some predictions on um, construction increase in pricing. It is gonna take four and a half million dollars to build what we propose because that's what it takes. I mean, it, it could be more, it could be less. We know lumber's coming down, but steel and concrete are not. Our menu, um, Bo's Dania Beach Grill. Um, we wanted to keep the Dania Beach Grill name, but we had to add Kim's name to it. Um, I, don't know, I hope that you can see those. It is a scan. If you have follow-up questions like you did of other presenters, um, we're happy to answer those questions as we go through. And with that, um, we would welcome any questions that you all have, um, any details you wanna walk through. But as I think I've said several times in the presentation, we know that this is, um, was supposed to be conceptual. We wanted to come through with something that we thought was turnkey ready, understanding that um, not only the Daniel Beach Commission, but the residents have a vested interest in this site as we all do as Broward County residents. And we are open to and flexible on most everything that works for the city and for PDKM. And with that, we hope that you select us. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, questions, I will start with Commissioner Llewellyn. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. so I'm sure I had a little issue with my microphone a minute ago. Um, first of all, thank you very much for the very thorough presentation and the very detailed um, uh, drawings and, and uh, representations here. Uh, really beautiful. Um, I am personally very familiar with Bo Campers. I am a huge Miami Dolphins fan. Um, so I have been to Bo several of the Bo Campers locations, um, including the one in Plantation and the one off of Oakland Park Boulevard. Um, I, couple of questions for you. It, predominantly what I've seen when I've gone, gone to Bo Campers is that it's mostly a sports, like a sports bar, um, elevated sports bar. Um, will you, and I may have missed it, but will you be having any um, ability to allow for live music at this location? Y yes, we, that's why we kind of left that open as far as the Tiki area, because we know that, you know, the Renaissance condos and, and residents to the south, we, we thought that putting them on the northern part, I don't know if you can see my arrow. Mm -hmm. you know, we were think, doing them maybe a little band. So we weren't, we weren't thinking concert venue. We were thinking local, you know, live music as we're all used to. Um, oh, I maybe lost, I can. I lost my arrow. Go ahead. I can help you with that question. Um, PJ Cavanaugh. PJ Cavanaugh. <clears throat> uh, we're, we're definitely planning, you know, on a daily base to have one to two piece. It's just part of the atmosphere that we want to achieve. And uh, to answer your question about sports bar, we don't see this being a sports bar. Uh, will we put a couple More of TVs bars, to yeah. see, watch a game, but the volume won't be, you know, you're not going to have that sports bar uh, atmosphere. And I have another reason for it because we have the experience of sports bars and like, uh, the amount of TVs we go through and everything, but it's, it's next to impossible to keep on TVs lasting any more than six months on the beach. So I'm very excited if we if we get awarded this that we don't have to put a lot of TVs in. Uh, we will be focusing on the live music to answer your, to answer your question. And um, you know, if you want to watch the dolphin game, there'll definitely be a couple <laughs> of TVs to watch the dolphin game. <laughs> After last week, I'm not sure if I do. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, also, um, the 
as, I, as I've asked everybody, although you can kind of see the menu there and I'm familiar with, with the prices at Bow Campers, can you give us an idea for the people that are maybe watching this, the, the public, um, the price ranges of the food and the drinks and any sort of specials that you might have for people that come to visit the establishment? I, I'll just uh, uh, open up on that conversation and then I'll hand it over to uh, Ricky here. She's got the menu in front of her. Um, we're about quality and uh, we take pride in our quality of food and you know, our burgers, like, a, a, for example, start off with, say, a, 12, a $12 burger, but it's all natural meat, no preservatives, no antibiotics. And, you know, that's the direction we're going. We're dealing with a farm up in um, Fort Pierce. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's all hand. about, it's all farm to hand. It's all about health. And um, we have another thing that I think will fall into this, which is not on this menu. We're introducing a, a Bose Killer Bee burger. It's going to be a new mm -hmm. concept that we're going to bring into our other restaurants. And um, this, I think, will be a perfect location to introduce that. It's a smaller patty, and you're going to be looking at a lower, you're going to be looking at, uh, it'll be a, a four, four, four ounce patty, and it will start at like um, a five, our price range is going to be from $5.95 then with the toppings up to like seven seven dollars but it's a smaller burger and uh, we'll have chicken sandwiches on that level as well but i just wanted to bring that to your attention before ricky goes into the prices on the menu thank uh, you john um so appetizers start at nine dollars um and appetizers are usually five dollars with the option to add uh, protein either chicken shrimp or catch of the day uh, we also have soups on our menu starting at four dollars We've got wood fired pizzas um, starting at $14. Um, our burgers starting at $12. And sandwiches also starting at sorry, $13.50. And we also have a catch of the day, which is like uh, local seafood that comes in, like the local fish generally. I know that today was mahi and swordfish today. When is mahi not officially today? <laughs> <laughs> we live in Florida. <laughs> Either that or snap. <laughs> sorry. No, sorry. No, and our entrees um, start at $17. Our signature cocktails start at $10. And our beers start at $5. And we also have beer buckets available. And also wines. And we, we do we do adjust and we cater to what the what the area re, um, you know what the market uh, requires. Uh, like we do bucket specials, we do uh, happy hour specials, and what we do on the intercoastal might be different than what we're doing on plantation, because it just the expenses one it's, it's a different support we need. But like we have a uh, college football bucket specials at twelve ninety nine, where you're getting five beers for twelve ninety nine. Uh, we have two for one happy hours in in in, in uh, Miramar plantation I mean I would see this being a great venue for a happy hour to create that evening off the beach and uh, you know possibly uh, like to look at doing two for one specials there um, but just to make it clear that we don't maybe do the two for one on the intercoastal but our other locations we do all right thank you very much for, for your presentation it was very thorough thank you thank you commissioner Davis uh, yes, thank you. I agree with Commissioner Llewellyn's very thorough presentation. And excuse me, because I did have to take a mini break. So if this question is repetitious, uh, I do apologize. But I did not hear um, examples of your philanthropic initiatives or how you engage the community. So uh, if you've answered that, then I, maybe I missed it. But if you could give me a brief overview, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I, I think, as I said, uh, you know, we talked about that a little bit. I'm, you know, I'm fortunate that my partners have allowed me to kind of continue to my outreach when I first came to South Florida and got involved in a, little, 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 a lot of different charities down here. They've allowed me to kind of incorporate that into the restaurants and expand them. Uh, you know, we're very, as I said earlier, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're very committed to our first responders and we're very committed to our military, uh, our, our people, our, whether they're veterans or current military, we, we always do big events for them. On Memorial Day, we bring down bagpipers from New York. We fill the place. Um, uh, you know, we have, we have police come down from from all over, come from all over the country to come down to, to, to our events 
and we do them for them. So uh, we're, we're very invested in that. And we're also invested in some of the, some of the um, charities I've been involved in, the American Cancer Society, uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, Jack and Jill in Fort Lauderdale, SOS Children's Village, Honor Flight. Um, we've been doing a golf tournament for, for some 20 years now uh, that we, we spread out to the, to the different locations that our restaurants, the golf tournaments usually out in plantation, but we try to spread that, uh, that, that money around to, to local charities. And, and, you know, our, our places, our places typically have, um, have setups where you have, you have room to have meetings, spaces. So, you know, we've got a, in, in our Miramar location, we've got a place that's got a full bar, uh, and you could put a, you could put a hundred people in there and, and have a, you know, have a, a party. We've had wedding receptions, those types of things. Or we've had, uh, you know, we've had Miramar, the city of Miramar, come in and do some of their their events there. Uh, so we try to provide those types of things also for people. Um, School-wise, from uh, you know, we've we've hosted a lot of schools uh, and, and you know that want to raise money. And every time a school comes in and wants to run an event, we do a give back to them, uh, where their people could come in. We give we give a percentage of the money. That they're raising, that, that that they're paying back to the school uh, for for their events. So I think we're as I, I would think that we're as community oriented and as charitable as, uh, as as just about any restaurant that I've been involved with or been around in South Florida. I think we put our we put our record up with everybody with with anybody else uh, as to what our uh, how active we are in the community, reaching out and uh, and doing all those types of things. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, that is it for me. Oh, no. And you may have answered this as well during my break, but I just want to know from the time of permitting your time frame for construction. What do you think, Brian? Uh, okay. Uh, permitting, first of all, we're anticipating a minimum of 90 days. Uh, uh, construction would take us hopefully only 10 months, but we're allocating a year. And that, that's based on current construction practices in South Florida, especially uh, on this type of property where the access is uh, not ideal for construction sometimes. Mm -hmm. Time for construction materials. Right, construction materials, things like that as well. Excellent. Thank you so much again for your, for your presentation. Thank you. Hi, I, I do have a question. Um, how many parking spaces do you anticipate? Um, this development establishment um, occupying on your best night? Uh, probably in the neighborhood of uh, 150. Yeah, we understand that there is a 300 space parking garage to be developed by Dania at some point as well. Correct. And we have to, you know, take into consideration. Um, the residents oh. don't, or the people who go into the beach and then the quarter deck and the marina, sure. people that, that may be going there. So I just want to make sure that we're managing everything correctly. And so is that including your staff? Uh, yes. Yeah. And I, as we are seeing a lot more, obviously, with Uber um, that's back online post worst part of the pandemic. Um, a lot of people are being responsible in Ubering or carpooling, taking other transportation. We know, we all live in Florida. We know, I like air conditioning in my car, so I drive. So. <laughs> hard, hard, to, hard to predict, Madam Mayor, but I mean, it's a, that's, that's an off-the-cuff prediction. Okay. Okay. Well, that, that's really all of my questions that I have. Um, staff, does anyone else have any questions? We could also consider uh, setting up a valet and then we could work out something with FAU or any other adjacent property. Uh, there is some vacant property there. And, and to do off site parking. And yeah. we could valet and, and off sites if necessary. Okay. All right. Well, I thank you so much for your presentation and the time that you've taken out to spend with us today. And I will turn it back over to the city manager for your recommendations of our next steps. Yes, thank you, um, mayor, vice mayor, commissioners, and to all the presenters today. Um, my suggestion is that you deliberate, um, you, you speak to your, your stakeholders, 
uh, your residents. I know how much you, you value um, their, their, um, their input. Um, we, we stand behind uh, the way we rank um, uh, these three uh, you know, firms. But um, at the end of the day is, is your decision um, our, our goal is, is to make sure that we have the best product up there that, that we can be proud of, um, that, that our residents can have, um, responsibly, but as soon as possible. Um, we're all very excited about that. Um, so we're looking at, at, at construction time. We're looking at, at finances. We're also looking at, um, the involvement in, in the community, in the community, in the Dana Beach community. Um, because this is one big family here. So the extension of, of that is, is important to us as well. I also wanted to take the, the, the time to thank not, you know, not only all of you, but all the residents. I, I, I watched online, everybody make their, um, a, the, their suggestions and their comments in this very in, in engaging fashion. And I wanted to thank the, the, the committee that worked very, very hard as well. So um, my recommendation would be that, um, that no later than the, the first meeting in, in October, uh, we would be bringing back an, an, an item for your, rec for your consideration. Okay, does anyone else have anything to say about that? I mean, I, I, I definitely would love to go and visit all of the places personally to really see the differences in the vibes and the feels, although I know that it may be customized to Dania Beach. And I would recommend that each of us do that as well if we have not already done so. Um, and uh, really get with, like, like you said, the community and the residents to see certain things that we may be able to ask um, a developer that we may choose or the establishment that we, we choose to be able to make sure that we have that input from the community and that we are engaging with the community um, in a transparent fashion. Does anyone else have anything else to add? Mayor, I, I think what you just said, it, it, it's a great idea. I, I wanted to remind you that you do have a travel budget that because of COVID really hasn't been tapped into. Um, and that's why as, as much as I would like to bring this forward in the next meeting in September, um, I really, really believe that should you want to go visit these places that you do have travel dollars available um, that we've set aside in the budget that have really not been tapped into. So I think, you know, being able to visit, you know, the, the different locations, um, not just in Florida, whether you want to visit one in North Carolina, it's, it's up to you. I think that that's a very responsible and, and that's a very good idea. Okay. Well, I'll definitely be taking a part in, in visiting. And so um, I don't see that anyone has any other questions. Vice Mayor hasn't peeped the word tonight. <laughs> he's, he's often very quiet over there. I'm um, listening there. I've heard it all. I'm just listening to see what's going on and uh, <laughs> trying to watch the presentations, which I thought were very good. And I thank everybody for doing that. But uh, I've been reading it over and over and over again and so on. But um, I am listening, just so you know I'm here. No, we know you're here. We see you. you see, we see you're engaged. Um, so thank you all. And uh, I welcome you all. If you have any questions for the commission, um, and this is to the public or want to meet with us, I'm sure we are all available and ready and willing to meet with you and, and, and hear your concerns and your input in this very important decision. And other than that, I, I guess we are going to be adjourned and I hope you all have a great evening. Good night.